that thing where you uh, go into a grocery store and you get you just know for a fact the guy the per, the person behind the register is just judging you so to avoid that you just you overcompensate You're like well well I don't want to get judged so instead of just buying a monster and a burrito I'm gonna buy um, some spinach and some and some like a banana and you, you eat way, way healthier than me so I, you I probably say, I'm even... the guy that goes in there that I think people look when they go like they're like man those people are eating really fucking good like, I always feel bad when I got the guy who's, like, in front of me. He's got, you know, the so off- That's me, then. I'm the guy in front of you. The, with the off-brand <laughs> macaroni and cheese and, like, the tortilla puffs and, you know, like, the chili cheese Fritos. And he's just like, yeah. And, and the Lonely Man pizza. Just like, see, is that pizza for two? No. Pizza just for me. one. Might take the rest of it to lunch the next day. Save save some money, you know. Yeah, um, I'm I'm the guy. I'm I'm the guy. I'm that guy, but in disguise. I'll like buy like, I'll be like, I know this motherfucker's gonna judge me. So I just and I don't know why I care, but I'm like, <laughs> he's even, so I'm he's like, even I go. Care. He's like, he's like, I don't know why this guy even he bothers. I I see him. I see him come up to the counter. We make eye contact really quickly, and next thing you know, he's reaching over to the produce aisle, grabbing a cucumber, grabbing some apples, and then coming back. I don't know why he does it, but he always does. I know I've seen way worse shit, but he thinks he's going to show me something I haven't seen. <laughs> he's like, I fear for the guy who buys the case of Jameson and says it's, and I go, big party tonight? And he goes, no, it's just for myself. <laughs> or he just looks at me and says, party? Just cocks his head like a confused dog. <laughs> then he doesn't say anything. He just stares <laughs> and slowly leans in, breathing heavily. I can smell the alcohol. It's not like he's, you know... He brushed his teeth, but it's just vaping out of him. <laughs> You're getting a buzz just by standing by this guy. I know. He's not allowed to walk into schools and gets children all fucking intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be the Easter Bunny, but then, you know... They almost said <laughs> he used to be the... He wasn't even the Santa Claus. He was the Easter Bunny. I feel like the guy who's Santa Claus, that guy at least... All right, He's I mean, the top I don't of the know. food chain as far as like costume characters go that are like not superheroes, I guess. Season, seasonal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> as far as people's secret identities go other than superheroes. It's like the next Santa, person, yeah. you know, Jesus, probably <laughs> Easter Bunny. <laughs> Then probably, you know, the guy that kind of shows up like at like a drug awareness. Hey, I'm like Owly the Owl telling you not to do drugs. That goes, you or know, like don't give a hoot or like don't pollute or what the fuck is it? Don't give a hoot. Don't pollute the fucking owl. Oh, the litter, the litter owl. Or yeah, whatever. the litter owl with Smokey the Bear, like pretty much Smokey the Bear's friends. But I haven't seen the litter owl in a long time. You know, Smokey ate that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, one day Smokey's like, you know what works good on a forest fire? Cooking up a fucking owl. <laughs> I thought we were friends. Like you're not relevant no more. A bear this is nature. Needs, needs damage. He starts pounding his <laughs> chest. <laughs> Takes his fucking hat off like odd job and throws it at him as he's trying to fly away. It like slices part of his neck, not not on his head off, but he's like bleeding from the neck. He goes down. He's like trying to crawl away on one wing while holding his neck, you know, just desperately. Well, I had a Smokey the Bear like stuffed animal when I was a kid. I probably still have it if I look hard enough. And he had like this like big thick plastic hat, like something you'd never find nowadays. So it's like he could have in real life. It could just be this sharp metal hat he's wearing. <laughs> could have odd job powers just in case like some like uh, forest poachers come by or some kids throwing like a kegger and says, hey, kids, you know, you're not allowed to be uh, having a kegger out here with a bunch of fire. It's kind of dangerous. Fuck off, Smokey. Oh, so we're doing it that way. <laughs> Takes the hat off, like does the odd job to him. He just turns around. He's like, well, I guess I'll just leave. Goes, takes about two steps. Spins around, got a fucking shovel. He's like, you're going to put that fucking fire out or I'm going to make you, boy. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Don't Smokey. make smoke. Smokey angry now. You wouldn't like Smokey when it's fucking angry. He's <laughs> like, oh, God. He's like, you, you know that <laughs> Smokey's just a 
carnivorous bear. Looks like you fucks are smoked now. Just like all of a it's just like it becomes a slasher flick of these stupid teens trying to get away from this bear. He was like, you know, with a shovel and an odd job hat for some reason. <laughs> he was like, I killed the give a hoot, don't pollute owl. I killed Ranger Rick. What makes you think I won't fucking kill you? Put I killed them and I fucking out. liked them. <laughs> yeah, Ranger Rick, he was a nice fella. I'm not really saying that, you know, he's a bad guy or anything, but I had to kill him. He didn't put the fire out. <laughs> what makes you think I'm not going to fucking kill you? <laughs> <laughs> just list on this lonely cabin, on the like overlooking the whole thing. Just He just like almost looks forward to someone starting a fire illegally, so it gives him a reason to kill. He sees smoke off in the distance. He starts running on all fours like towards them. <laughs> just <laughs> with a shovel on his back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, because that's what it always is. It's always like you stand there with a shovel, like it's he's fucking like Lance a lot of the forest, mm -hmm. you know, just ready to dig and put a fire out at a moment's notice. <laughs> it's got the image of him at some point, like some like, like he kind of does the stealth kill. He's going to like one of the campers, just like puts a pillow over their face. He's doing that shh shh shh. <laughs> he's got a little teeny shovel up to their like neck, <laughs> like a gardener <laughs> shovel. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got a whole arsenal of shovels. That's what he is. Has has there been any slasher care any slasher villain who I mean maybe at some point someone just used a shovel real quick? Like I know in um is it Phenomena? The Dario it's not I, I thought it was a Dario Gento movie. I don't know if it is a Dario Gento movie where the where the where the one girl like I think it's Jennifer Connelly like slashes like some like crazy bitch's head off with a shovel at the end. I, aside from that, yeah, that that's yeah. Funny. Aside from that, has there been somebody that used the shovel a lot in whole, horror films to kill people? Not really. I mean, I, I know that like if we went back, you could probably find a handful of shovel deaths out there, but I, nobody's like full on like that's their main weapon. You know, it's not like how you know Jason's got his fucking machete, Freddy's got his claws, you know, Mike Myers has his knife. There had to be probably like some like random '80s horror slasher that try a couple that probably tried to use someone using a shovel, but it just didn't work for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know of anybody who's like their main weapon is a shovel. I guess there's a shoveler in like uh, um, Mystery Men. Yeah, Mystery Men. That's a digger. <laughs> that's the, that's digger. the closest thing I can think of too. You know, if he just went off the fritz, then we'd have a <laughs> shovel slasher movie. I like the Smokey the Bear idea though. That like. Smokey just takes out fucking teenagers and derelicts that can't put their fires out. Mm -hmm. He patrols. He's got a coat. He's like the Punisher, but he patrols the woods with the shovel, like, you know, and the only people he kills are people that don't put their fires out or that don't fucking go all the way and they leave all the ashes and coals there, but they didn't stir it around with the dirt. I, I'd say give it like a little, give him a little bit more darkness to it rather than just being the kind of like the Punisher. It's more, it's more like. He looks forward to it. He oh, yeah. actually hopes you don't, because he's he's a fucking animal. He needs to kill someone. Well, maybe it could be also. So he sees like the, you have the owl. It can almost be like a banjo kazooie thing, like fucking the owl like on his back. <laughs> it's in so his fucking backpack, fly. so he flies so down. He's running away, and he's like fucking owls flying with a bear, carrying a bear after him. <laughs> maybe if it just like if, like it gets too far away from the bear, like maybe the owl's giant too, and it just like drop like comes out, just like ah, just this giant owl. And yeah, picture the owl. Being, like, like it has to be big enough to carry a fucking bear, so it's like a huge owl. It's like, if you look, I mean, don't do me wrong, I think owls are cool, but if you look at enough kind of um, nature footage of owls, they're fucking freaky. You know what I mean? They'll do like, you know, well, that like kind of like... They're like the predator. They're, they're like the serial killer of the woods, almost. Yeah, I mean, they're beautiful looking, they're really cool animals, but I mean, if you look at some like real crazy nocturnal footage, like, I don't know, I just fell down the YouTube hole one day of like, and there's a guy going into his like, into his farm, and there's a whole bunch of owls in there, and they're all kind of making like a weirder noise, they're just kind of like bobbing their heads, like, just like almost, it was almost freaky, they're, and they're all in sync with it too, you know, so. Well, plus, yeah, it's like, if, if you're a small kind of like mammal out there in nighttime, it's like, you gotta fear every moment that that owl's up there. It's kind of like, I remember mm -hmm. there was a story when I was a kid. It was like one of those ones where, I can't remember what it was. It was, it was a book, and it was about like this mouse, and like they're kind of like mouse tribe family or whatever, and there was this owl that was kind of like the main thing. It's like, you got to be careful when you go out at night. There's the fucking owl out there. He's going to get you. It says that in a kid's book. Words verbatim in the book, the kid's book, yeah. Yeah, and I just remember that. That's like what it was. It was like whenever they were out, it was always like the fear of the owl. It was almost to be up there like a giant sentry like watching over. And then all of a sudden, some people run like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. And then like the owl's like swooping down like, 
coming after him. They're running like towards a log or something to hide. Like our friend uh, Wes one time was telling me that I don't remember where they were going, but he said like he was he was I think he said he was somewhere in Tahoe. He and his friend he and um, his friend Sean were going somewhere, and they're driving down like this dark road to go meet up with a friend somewhere to go pick him up from a party or something. Mm-hmm. And just this dark like you know road, and I want to say he said it was snowing, and like. He says he sees like a little mouse. Maybe it wasn't snowing, but he sees a little mouse run across the run across the uh, run across the um, road, and then an owl swoops down, and then the grill it gets down. The grill just just feathers, <laughs> just, just owl explodes. explodes, and they pull over a little later, and like there's nothing left of the owl, just some like feathers and a little bit of blood inside the grill. Like that thing just full on fucking exploded when it on, on impact, and then he says. Um, your friend's like, man, we gotta. I don't know if we should drive, man. This is a, this is like a bad omen. Like owls are like an omen of death. Or not, I don't even know if he was that like superstitious. But like, owls are an omen of death. He says, you know what this means? Like Wes, he's like, I just pissed in death's fucking eye. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, man. We're not stopping now. <laughs> <laughs> we just conquered death. <laughs> yeah. Which I am like, all right, right on, man. <laughs> Right there, I'd be like, I'd be like, let's let's take the cinnamon. He's like, and he's like, no, fuck that, let's go. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of a moment. One time, me and Kyle, we were driving up to go to the lake or something like that, and I felt bad because, like, at one point, it was like on the highway and everything, driving, and this bird flies out and just like, I mean, like, all of a sudden, you just hear bam, and you're like, oh fuck, I just hit a bird. You know, you kind of feel bad. You're like, but it's like, what can I do? It's like the bird came out split second. You're going 50 miles per hour. What are you gonna do? And then we're pulling up to the lake, and everybody keeps giving us these fucking dirty ass looks, and I'm like the fuck is everybody's like jeez what they don't respect like a somebody driving a 25 year old car or something like that and all of a sudden <laughs> we get out and this bird is in the grill like fucking wings spread out its necks fucking like snap and sticking <laughs> out like it looks just like i fucking like road warrior slapped a bird on like the front of my car and was driving around <laughs> like he's fucking mad max and fuzz your hood ornament yeah pretty much that's what it was i'm like oh okay now i kind of get why he's <laughs> like a dick towards us I've had that happen to to me two times with like pigeons and small birds getting caught in the grill of my Subaru. I had this one the, girlfriend. The Subaru would just be literally like cong 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 driving down the road yeah. eating animals. <laughs> That's the kind of hood for it. That truck was so um, big that in the middle it would go out in the middle of the night and have to eat small vehicles to survive. Smart I cars that lived in fear from that thing. Or no, I was thinking the suburban. My bad. You said Subaru. I- yeah, yeah, yeah. The, su- the 80 Suburban, suburban was thing. just like the, the behemoth of all vehicles. The 89 Suburban that, we used to, that I used to drive. Ba- that our thing Batmobile. Just like, the, yeah, yeah, that thing would just be like... I'm pretty sure it kind of went out and murdered other cars to like gangs. I have no idea how that thing lasted as long as it did. But um, but no, I had this one girlfriend who drove like... A, I want to say it was a Jeep Cherokee. And she would always... Her, that for some reason that thing was like a magnet for bats like she hit five bats with that thing and one time when she was telling me we were she, she was driving somewhere and she was telling me like yeah my car is like a magnet for bats i have no idea why it just and all of a sudden like a fucking bat comes down into the fucking grill <laughs> it's like all right well she's like, are you shitting me we pull over like i guess that's number five fuck you know? that's a lot i don't think i've never hit a bat Nope, never have. <laughs> well, this was this was up in Oregon, so maybe there are a lot more. I guess I don't know. Maybe the more population of bats there or something. I don't know. I guess, but I yeah, say, like I see bats all the time. Like if I go outside right now and look out, I could probably find a bat. But yeah, never never ran into a bat before. It's, this is going to sound so dumb, but uh, this is how simple my mind works. I don't know. I mean, I see when I when I see bats out in public, I don't really think I don't really think a whole lot of it. But if I'm like in like you know out, not, well out in like the mountains, I'm thinking, oh, cool bat, whatever. But if I go out into like downtown Sonora, even though downtown Sonora is not the only part, not the only city that has this, but if I walk down downtown Sonora and there's bats flying around, I'm kind of like, oh, that's what my, what Gotham City must be like. <laughs> uh, yeah, when it, yeah, when you see it, it's like in the city, it's like, ah, oh, this is pretty cool. Well, I don't know, sometimes whenever a bat comes in the house, it's like I sit there and go, ah, oh, yes, that's it. I will become the bat. <laughs> it, like, busts in through your window. It, like, lands, like, on a statue of Arnold Schwarzenegger that you have. Yeah, like, I know what I will do now. I know what I must do. <laughs> Put on my fucking Nightwing costume. <laughs> but you know speaking of batman sort of kind of sort of there i i started reading this one series 
I started reading the Batgirl comic series. And the new one with the uh, where she has the purple jumpsuit? Yeah, the one where she's kind of got like the homemade one and everything like that. It was on sale on Comixology, and they had like six issues for like a buck. So I just, or like, well, they're a buck each. So I bought all those. And I was like, I fell in love with that series. It was just like, it's so fucking good. It was like, became one of my new favorite ones that I went out. I bought all the rest of them just instantly. After reading the first six, I was like, it's so good. I will pay the rest. And they were all like two bucks a piece or something like that for the rest of them. I heard that's a good series. I haven't read it, but people tell me. I recommend it so highly. When you go back out, you can go get the graphic novel of, I think, the first six or seven or whatever it is. But go get it. It is such a fun series. And then there's just like, there's just other things in it that like, I like, like they kind of got, when she goes into detective mode, she really thinks out her problems, all this stuff like this. She'll get kind of like, almost reminds me of um, in Arkham Knight 3 or whatever you want to call it. Um, the prequel one. Batman Origins? Yeah, yeah. So when you go to solve Arkham all those Origins. crimes and stuff, and then you kind of can see, like, sort of, like, almost, not really silhouettes, but, like, you see, like, invisible, like, ghost shapes of, like, what everything must be. She kind of has that going on and all this stuff. But then what I really like about it is it reminds me of, like, Scott Pilgrim. It has, like, that kind of feel. That's what the artwork will kind of look like. I'd say. And the artwork, yeah. It, the artwork's really cool. But it's just that kind of thing where it's like, okay, she's fighting crime. You know, she still uses all her kind of hacker skills. She's got a, a roommate who's also like a hacker. So that almost becomes like the sort of the new Oracle. And then, you know, you got characters like Black Canary shows up, even though Black Canary seems to like not like her nearly as much and everything like that. But it's just it's really is she fun. is she is she does she come across because I don't know. It kind of varies. Sometimes Barbara Gordon's treated like she's like 28. Other times she's treated like she's 16. Is this probably more like early 20s, like 21, 22 kind of? She's kind of like. It's like the very end of college. Like, I think she's like almost at the point where she's doing like, a, like she's like in her master's or so. Mm-hmm. So they got like her, I, like if I had to guess, I would say she's like 24, yeah, 24, so. 25 or so. It's weird. Cause like Dick Grayson's supposed to be like, you know, around that probably same age too. But like, he's still just to me, I, I just picture him like he's in his thirties. I don't know why. It's just, yeah. they did the thing where like, we'll go back, but the characters are really going to look the same. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to kind of take in it, like, but whatever. No, not really. Well, they're about to get reboot everything again. Well, not exactly. I don't know if they're rebooting it, but just rebrand everything again and try and get a new. They they did. They already did it with Fifty Two. They did it with Convergence. Now they're doing it again. I don't know if it's a rebrand or if it's just like rebooting or or what. But I mean, regardless, hopefully, hopefully they kind of leave the ones that everyone seems to love alone. You know what I mean? Like, hopefully they leave kind of like because everyone seems to love that book, and that's one I was considering getting. I just got this huge stack. I got to work down. I, I got. I'm <laughs> I in the middle had of a reading. stack like this big, and I ended up buying them, and it was just kind of like I did out of my way, <laughs> out of the way. You, that girl's coming first. I like this is that's happening. One next... of my new favorite series. It's that good. That's become that's happening next week when I when a uh, Batman Volume Eight by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo comes out. I, know, I got that pre-ordered um, already. But the, the Batgirl one, the thing about it too, it's like she's in this kind of like section of goth. You always kind of there's just more sections of Gotham as you learn throughout time. But she's like in the one called like Burnside or whatever, and it's one of those kind of areas. You, when you're reading this, you're like, man, I want to fucking be there. That's where I want to be. And Gotham's never a place you say like you want to be. It's like no, no. no. I like to read about Gotham. I don't want to be in Gotham. Like, I just feel like as a regular person, you're just going to be beaten and raped and poisoned, like, <laughs> over and over, too. But you won't fucking die. That'll be the worst part of it all. <laughs> You'll come back just for it to happen again. Exactly. But Burnside's kind of like this area where it's like, yeah, there's crime and all this kind of stuff. But it just feels kind of fun. It feels like a place you want to be. Things are happening here. It's not dark and gloomy like Gotham, and you're not afraid to, like kind of bright and sunny but not really maybe so almost kind of like uppity like you know metropolis is or something like that I'm talking about this like these are like real fucking places like you could go there <laughs> <laughs> or it's not like um fucking what's nightwing's town um bloodhaven bloodhaven it's not, it's not like bloodhaven it's, it's kind of like the ghetto of the ghetto of gotham mm-hmm yeah, um, I'd be I'd be down for checking this book out. Like, it's definitely isn't this book also a little bit more like funny? Like, it's not like it's not like jam packed with humor, but it's also a lot more of just kind of like they want to have more fun with it. Because don't get me wrong, I love Batman. I love Batman's still my favorite series, and I love how dark it is. But I think some of the problems with Batman spinoffs is they're trying too hard to be like Batman. So it's like reading another Batman, but it's kind of like just kind of different and the character you know what i mean so that's i think it's some of the problem with some of the comics so this one right so of some of the spin-off comics so this yeah. one 
would you say this one's a little bit more upbeat? Because that's what it looks like from the color, from the well, colors and the art style. What makes this one great is like you get Batgirl, but it's not just yeah, your regular okay. Here's a Batman story that just happens to be with Batgirl. This one, it's like you know, she's kind of she's finishing up her master's program, so she's doing this big thesis thing, which is she's creating a program. Pretty much, she's creating Minority Report when you really break it down. She's making mm-hmm. this computer like algorithm that can sense crime before it happens and everything like that, and. She actually ends up losing it. There's there's a huge fire that burns down all of Black Canary's shit and all of um, Barbara Gordon's stuff, and that's why she loses her costume. And she has to are, are they are they roommates it. or live in the same? Um, there's kind of like I didn't read that first section of Batgirl that comes before it, but somehow some way when they're in their birds of prey thing, they must all have Black Canary must have just had a big like storage unit that got burnt down or whatever. But Barbara Gordon loses all her stuff. Black Canary loses all of her stuff. And in that process, that's where Barbara has to make her own costumes. But then in one of the first issues or so, she loses that hard drive that has like that algorithm on it, but it's still all in her mind. Like she's, they they almost like, almost kind of like, maybe I, I never noticed this too much before and probably has been there, but they almost make Batgirl out that she's got like, she can remember just about anything. She doesn't forget stuff. Like she could have an entire like humongous math problem in her brain and write it fully out. And it's just like, you know, or blueprints. She can see a blueprint, memorize the whole thing. And then she can draw it back out again. Like they almost give her like Mm. that kind of superpower. Okay. Like photogenic memory. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But no, what I like about though, is it is like a girl's comic. Like that's kind of how it feels like, that's almost kind of fun to break it up just from like, you know, you read Batman where it's just like, man, 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 <laughs> can't have woman in the life. Even boys are sometimes hard to deal with because it's man, 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 man. Alfred's like, oh, God, is he singing that song again? Man, 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 man. <laughs> Alfred's old, but he's a man, so it's okay. Man, 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 man. Alfred's yeah. the only person he does it in front of. He's afraid it's going to, like, anybody else sees him. So he'll be, like, working in the Batcave. Alfred's dusting something. He's going over Prince. Man, 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 man. <laughs> Fucking Damien walks in. He just shuts up. It's his own, yep. that's his only, There's like, bench. boy over there breaking up the man time. That boy is coming closer to me. Oh, God, he's going to ask me for something. <laughs> what is a Damien? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I want to be a man. Shut the fuck up. You're not a man. Yeah. <laughs> this is man time man time <laughs> but this is what I'm makes kind of like the Batgirl one fun is it's like you, it, it's got sort of this quirkiness to it she's fighting crime there is serious stuff going on but then there can be laughs there is a little bit you know there's dating going on there's one uh, the one of the last ones I kind of read because I'm almost caught up on it she was like planning out her friend's like wedding and this is kind of the comics that's, it's, it's like very like you know like now it's like the people that were getting married were a lesbian couple. You know, they got gay characters in it. They got like, you know, a black guy can date a white girl. Like it just like it's, it's not like there's nothing holding it back. Where like in other comics, they might like sort of shun away from that stuff. This one's like, hey, whatever. This is this is this is how life is like, fuck it. We're not going to like hide this stuff. It seems to be kind of a correction because right when the new 52 happened, um, the only one I read that had a major female character in it during the right when the 52 restarted everything was Red Hood and the Outlaws. And that right there, they're like, kind of mad the fucking title. Red Hood. Yeah. Well, like they had they, the one, one thing about that, though, was that pissed a lot of people. It pissed a lot. Apparently, a lot of the female characters were made out to be way more like, you know, sexualized, apparently, like. Um, even though I like that series, Red Hood and the Outlaws, I can kind of see that at the beginning, Starfire. It was kind of like that movie Savages to a certain extent, like both Starfire and Red Hood are kind of fucking her at the same time. Not yeah. like a three-way, but kind of like, oh, yeah. But, we're but just... if, if, if it did happen like that, it wouldn't be weird or anything. <laughs> I was kind of expecting something like that to happen at some point, but it was, they were kind of like an open relationship. Comes home and just like, hey, Speedy, Speedy. <laughs> <laughs> And and then like and then like uh, as it went on though like it just became more of like Arrow I mean, I mean um, Arsenal, Arsenal and uh, and Starfire rather than the three three of them together like that. Fucking Jason Todd jerking off in the corner. Can I just watch? I just want to watch. <laughs> it's just like it's like what if that's like, all it was like you're flipping through it just like is this all this is? I mean like I just expected this to be killing and violence and you know Punisher fighting crime but it's like no it's just like. Three people fucking the whole time. Every issue is like this. Oh, I'm sure there's a fan comic somewhere. I, I'm, I guarantee it if you look long enough on the line. But it was supposed to be like, appa- that's the only example I know of, but apparently other ones are like that. So I think 
they kind of realize is, is this book series written by a girl by chance? Because I think I feel no, like this a weird series thing. is a correction. Like, and I see this a lot. It's ri- it's written by guys, but it is drawn by a girl named Babs something. Or, like I literally every single time I come to an issue, I look for her name because I like her artwork so much that I'm bummed out whenever it's an issue. And it's like, oh, she must have taken a vacation or something because she's not on there. She only did the cover for this one. And even though that person's close, it's just like, uh I like this Babs girl way more. She draws really good. She, it's just the artwork almost sells it to me. Sort of like there was another comic that's pretty much tied in with the Batgirl one, but I've been reading it for a while too, is the Black Canary series, which just seems like a weird one. Like I just picked that up. I looked at the covers of them. I'm like, this looks fucking awesome. And it's like Black Canary's in a band. Sure, I'll read this one. And those ones are awesome too. But then at some point they changed the artwork for a couple of issues and it kind of went, I always call it like generic kind of comic book artwork. It's not bad. Yeah. It's actually really good but it's kind of so good that it feels like it doesn't have character to it as much anymore that's Sadly, yeah, I, a lot of batman ones are kind of like or mostly comics that are like it's not batman batman but it's sort of like secondary batman or secondary characters sometimes they kind of fall into that category where it's like they have just sort of generic comic book artwork like it's it's really good but it's just missing the almost like it's missing the love maybe like almost like if you were making a meal you made it with all the right ingredients you did everything like that but a machine was making that. You know what I mean? It's sort of like, mm-hmm. I feel bad saying that because it's like somebody's like, hey, I try my damnedest to draw like all that shit. Every fucking day of the week, I'm out there drawing fucking Batman Eternal. It's like, yeah, 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 don't be around. Batman Eternal's cool, but you know, just, just, just it's missing the, the character. No, I get you. It's kind of like, even if it doesn't look as like realistic, there is something about like, I don't know, even though like it, it not, not taking him away, I love Greg Capula's artwork, but it, I think it's kind of like Greg Capula stuff is, um, even though it doesn't look as realistic, something about it just, I mean, it, the, the anatomy is right and all that, but it, it, it may not look as realistic, but the, uh, art style really stands out and you know it when you see it. Exactly. And same that's, thing that's with what makes his stuff so good is because you're like, I feel like this is unique. It's like you can tell it's Greg Capullo artwork just by looking at it. Same thing with like Tim Sale. Tim Sale is one mm-hmm. of my favorite artists. So and like Jeff Lowe, I'm mean, not Jeff Lowe, but, uh, J- Jim Lee. I think you got a lot of people trying to m- mimic Jim Lee. And I think Jim Lee, his stuff kind of stands out, you know. Yeah, but definitely. I think you got so many people trying to be him or trying to be Michael Turner that I think sometimes it kind of runs together, you know. Yeah, well, because I think that's kind of the problem is everybody tries to be Jim Lee and Michael Turner and kind of combine together. And then it just ends up being, I just call it like generic combo. <laughs> that just feels like you get it sort of in like the, kind of almost like the B grade, like, you know, DC and Marvel comics, you know. Actually, strange enough, a lot of Marvel comics fall a lot more into that, I noticed, than even DC does. Every once in a while, you get the comics where they're like, hey, you have some freedom in it. But it's like, that's why I like the Batgirl one, is because it almost has artwork that's maybe not like perfect, but that makes it, it makes it way more. I love, I love looking at that art way more than the stuff that's like, okay, this building is drawn at a perfect right angle. These things, it's like almost where. I feel like you could have a computer fucking draw that. You could just input, like, what you want, and the computer would just, like, end up making the drawings. Okay, well, who we got? Well, you got Red Hood fighting Penguin. It's like, and then it just puts it out. Boom. They're on the dock. Mm -hmm. There's a background. You know, where I like these ones where it it just looks like the care was put into it. And what I just love about both the Black Canary and the Batgirl one is that artwork's so cool. And I'm glad that people are kind of taking that Scott Pilgrim idea and going with it because Brian Lee O'Malley can only do so many books. So mm-hmm. it's nice to see other people sort of using that, and then we get more of that art, because I'm totally fine with that art. I'm like, more of that. I love to see it. A similar kind of style, um, Becky Conley or Colin, I, I, I believe. I, I'm drawing a blank. I, I, uh, Colin, Conley or Colin, something like that. I know she works on Gotham Academy. I haven't read Gotham Academy, but I've heard good things about it, so I'm kind of curious. Um, I got like and- one issue of it because it was tied into like the Robin Wars, but I haven't read it yet. And then she's also actually something else she did. She did the issue that I believe introduced Harper Rowe in that um, in the second volume of uh, Scott Snyder's run. Oh, uh, it, I, I like that artwork. I'm, I'm yeah. waiting for Harper Rowe to have kind of her own comic. She's just kind of featured in everybody else's. But I like that when that character first came out, you're like, oh, fuck this character. Just some like mechanic. Then she comes in, like, give her a mask. Oh, wait, no, she's fucking cool. Yeah, because now it's like I'm not trying to call you out cool. or nothing, but yeah. You know, and it's kind of weird. It's like they just kind of like live together. She just lives a spoiler, and spoilers kind of fucking retarded. Like, spoiler not, always fuck shit up. Yeah, spoilers is kind of like that, that. Yeah, it's that one where it's like she's like sort of talented and like 
martial arts and so on, but then she's just kind of like yeah, out there and dumb and, and it's, I think it's kind of bad. It was like it's like she's blonde, so she's stupid. <laughs> well, she like in like it, back before it became the Fifty Two and all that in War Games. She basically just turned the whole city on each other. I don't know. Batman, granted, he's always, for whatever reason, Batman always creates some kind of weird scenario. Like, I got to I gotta prepare a scenario in case this happens or whatever, you know. And she was Robin for a little while. Then she got fired after a week or whatever. And she was dating Robin. And she, oh, she was dating Tim Drake. He says, look, I'm Robin. Like, what the fuck are you, Robin? What the, what the fuck are you, Robin? I just quit being Robin. You're fucking Robin, you know. And then, like, I just thought it'd be nice. I don't know. And then, like... Then she's like, well, I got to prove Batman I can do something. So I'm going to, I, she took one of his war scenarios, put it to, like, called a bunch of, like, Gotham crime bosses. Then it escalated into a war. It's like, oh, no, what I do? And then she basically fucking yeah. dies by the end of war games because she goes up against Black Mask and, like, gets tortured. And, like, you know, they showed that she's tough and she's strong and all that. But she, she has done. one of those, she has one of those moments where she points a gun right at, like, black masks head like i'll do it i'll kill it like all right go ahead and do it just like, well, actually batman wouldn't want me to do says this shit out loud like batman wouldn't want me to do that so he's a stupid bitch smacks her and then like <laughs> and then basically this then like this is actually one of the more controversial things like she actually like batman took got her in time to uh leslie tompkins and Leslie Thompson, like, she's like, why, why to, you know, she died. Like, I got her in time. I got her to you in time. Why'd you, how'd she die? He's like, well, truth is, I feel bad, but I let her die because you kept on endangering young people and all that. Bam's like, fuck you. I, I do what I can. You know what I mean? Gave him this whole, like, who's right, who's wrong. And Leslie Tompkins felt horrible about it, but she said, if one of if I let one of them die, maybe that will stop him from getting other people killed. And that was one of those things where, like, oh, that's kind of a shitty way to go because Leslie Tompkins is a pretty good character. Yeah, it, it, yeah, that's kind of it's like one of those kind of weird ones, but I see where it's kind of coming from, and it's kind of like, but maybe this will stop Batman from fucking grabbing Shilton in the middle of the night. It don't. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> you know, even though I let my man time, you know, you gotta have a boy every once in a while, or a little girl, or something. Fuck it, I can find him. I can train him. <laughs> I don't even think it's not even like one of those things like he always doesn't want them to join. He never wants them to join. He's like, eh, all right, come along, then you're just going to keep on fucking my shit up unless you don't like do things the bat way, you know, so <laughs> the bat way or the highway. <laughs> like, like, like Tim leans in a dick. Like, does he, did he say, yeah, he said it to me when, when I first joined. Don't worry. He says it to everybody. <laughs> Dick's like, it's okay though. Cause now I'm part of the man team now. <laughs> you, you don't understand, but you will one day. <laughs> They're just kind of like bumping fists together. Man team, man team. Like all He's not like bumping chest. <laughs> like all the men. Fucking rip their shirts up and start doing it. So like, uh, Tim's like, I don't know if I want to be part of this. You don't got chest here. He's like, and Batman's like, Alfred, get over here. Chest bump, chest bump. He's like, uh, no, sir, I'm quite fine where I am. Chest bump! He has to, like, rip his shirt open. Okay, chest bump. Mind team, mind team. <laughs> Alfred just rips off. He's just, like, extraordinarily ripped in. <laughs> the qualifications is you actually have to... <laughs> Fucking, like, Marsha, like, Bruce Lee ripped underneath. <laughs> One of the qualifications is you actually have to have chest hair. <laughs> yeah, and then every once in a while it gets tangled. Yeah. And then you're kind of stuck for a second. And it's this weird, awkward moment because you start making eye contact, but not the good kind of eye contact. And then you then you realize that your dicks have just touched. And your dick touched dick, whose name is Dick. And then it's an awkward moment. Then you never speak of it again, but there's like four other eyewitnesses who weren't allowed <laughs> in the man team circle. <laughs> uh, but yes, I really recommend checking out that Batgirl comic. No chest bumping. <laughs> she just jumps into the man team thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of funny too because, like, I like because I haven't really been reading like like Batman. I'm sort of like almost kind of behind in a sense on Batman because I just wait for the graphic novels and those ones. Where I've been reading like Grayson and Batgirl and Batman and Robin Eternal and all and Damien and all these other ones that kind of circle it. So I see all these events happen, but almost like from the other characters' perspectives. But it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like when Jim Gordon kind of comes to like. Barbara to explain that he's Batman now. It's just like, oh fuck, he's got like a mohawk and he shaved his mustache off and everything like that. It's just like you get that same surprise that almost Barbara gets, but you get it too. And it was the same way that I felt like when I was reading Grayson. And then he goes to talk to Bruce, and it's like Bruce has the amnesia, and it's like, the fuck, he's not Batman. Like I get the same reaction that Dick got. 
I got the first two like issues of that on my phone, and when I after that took place after uh, Endgame, first two or three issues, and they're all really good. I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna hold up and wait because I just I know I'm just gonna rebuy the series when it comes out on on like hardcover. So that's what I'm doing. I, and I, a lot of people are complaining about like. Sometimes people complain when they play around with things like this, when they kind of do something as controversial as making Tim, uh, jo- uh, jo- uh, uh, Jim Gordon Tim Batman Jim in, like a, in a robot yeah, suit. It kind of sense. It's like, that seems like one of the logical choices. Like, okay, we've already had Dick be Batman. We had Asriel be Batman, which was more just kind of like a, a, a 90s ballsy choice, even though I like Asriel. Um, you know, why not have Jim Gordon? Like, wouldn't that be like the, actually one of the next logical choices to have? Yeah, I'm, I'm all for. Well, my thing is, I think it's like any concept can, like that can sound stupid, but if you can write it well enough and draw it well enough, I think it's passable. Because I'll be honest, if someone said, "Okay, uh, Batman is no longer Batman. Uh, now it's Jim Gordon, and he's in a robot suit," I'm like, and he uses a gun, I'd be like, "Wait, what?" But you know, it's Scott Snyder. He's trying something different every once in a while. I mean, I think there is a way you can make it. You can make it. Um, drastically different and still be in the same spirit and there are other ways where it just seem like a cash grab in this case i think he is doing something that is interesting it does stand out i gotta read the whole series of course first though yeah no, i know i know because all this stuff i've been seeing from like almost like the sidelines you know so it's like i see it in the batgirl one it's like oh fuck jim goran's like it's sort of like he's not totally in control when he's in that metal suit it's like the you know the gotham city police department is so that makes mm-hmm. it like kind of a different thing going on where it's the police are sending him out to sort of fight crime and to kind of take over the vigilante thing and they don't want people like batgirl and batwing and all those other guys to be running amok so they're all kind of in sort of hiding like batwing lucius is pretty much just running or not lucius but uh luke his name? luke fox yeah luke fox he's pretty much just running a company right now he's not really batwing at the moment you know batgirl's still out there but she's still getting harassed by everybody like whenever she goes out and fights crime grayson's obviously off being like super spy mm-hmm. damien's you know and bumfuck you know asia doing his thing and so on and figuring out you know his mother coming back from the dead and all that good stuff but oh she died no yeah i gotta i, I gotta read that i'm getting that i'm getting that confused with the movie so this is the thing is like starts all interweaving and then you're like i can't remember what happened in what kind of context well, even if she did die it's only a matter of time before she came back anyway so but yeah um, it's, that's that's just kind of the razzle ghoul way yeah it, it's just to like die come back it's all in the family that's what they do. Um, I saw, I've seen Race Ra- die. I've seen Talia die. I saw my boy die. I mean, like, they just all come back. just in their genes to come back. If only them Waynes <laughs> could... I don't even worry about Damien now. Fuck, I sent him out doing anything. He, sh- he get ran over by a tank. I know he's coming back to life. It's okay. Somehow. <laughs> oh, he died again? It's all right. It'll happen. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things. That's why I don't really take any superhero death too seriously anymore. There was a time like, oh fuck, and you could still have like a very emotional moment that really stings and gets to you, but it doesn't. I, you know, they're coming back. I mean, it's one of those things. Even the characters that seemed untouchable, like I think you know, everyone says that it seemed it seemed like anybody's free game once Superman came back. But I think, in all honesty, it seems more free game once uh, Bucky came back because Bucky was dead. For a long ass time, yeah, I mean, there, there was he, he died. Years. He died in 1945. I mean, he probably didn't die in the actual comic back then. There was probably some flashback, like, "Yep, that's where Bucky is. Bucky's dead in the water." So that's why we don't have him no more. And then and Bucky just wants to me, "No, Bucky's fucking dead." And then Ed Rubick <laughs> comes back. No, Bucky's a badass with a robot arm, and he's an assassin. He kills Red Skull. This and that, you know. So then it's like, oh, okay, well, shit. I guess anybody's free game in that case then when they even said even though like it seems kind of shitty because they said like somebody even said you know if we brought jason todd back i think that would be kind of a shitty move and they fucking did it well then they did it and and at first i just remember when those those first ones came back where it's like really you're gonna bring back jason it's like it felt like it was wrong i was like that kind of made such a great but then when he comes back and then once they finally develop him into like the red hood and the character and i think like no, no, no. I think Jason Todd's an amazing character now. I actually like him even more than I thought I had ever liked Jason Todd. He was just a shitty Robin. He, that was his thing. He was the shitty yeah. punk Robin. And his what was, what was his defining quality? He got killed by the Joker. And then now he's his own character. They got like a- But now I like it. It's like he's, he's Punisher Batman. And I'm like, that, that's fucking badass. Why not? Mm-hmm. But um, did you see the 10 Cloverfield Lane movie yet? I really wanted to, and this is going to be kind of like a bullshit excuse right here why I didn't see it today, but it's one of those things. My Part of my uh, 
no, but anyway, uh, so basically part of my ceiling has some water damage from some time back and I have to wait for it to get painted. So I last two fucking days, some painter's supposed to come by. He's going to come by at this time. That's my landlord. Fuck him. The evil Dr. Wong. Evil Dr. Wong. He's supposed to come by at some point and you'll be here at this time. Didn't show by yesterday. Okay. No, it's gonna be this day. And a motherfucker has my phone number. And so last two days, it's just been me waiting at fucking home for this guy to get over here to paint this shit. So he just I really wanted to, I really wanted to see this movie so we can talk about it today, but you can go ahead and talk about it. You can even spoil it for me. I mean, I wanted to see it. I wasn't dying to see it, but I, I wanted to see it. I will kill it. I'll tell you this. You will be dying to see it once you see it. <laughs> if that makes any fucking logical sense. Because it was one of these movies. Like, here's the thing. The first Cloverfield, I never cared to see it. I just, it was, I, I saw it and I hated shaky camera. To this day, I like I can handle it maybe a little bit more, but I still hate shaky camera. To me, I just consider it like, sort of like lazy filmmaking. I do get that, yeah, they were doing it as like a handheld movie that was sort of almost like the charm of it, and it was supposed that was kind of the uniqueness. But it just still never appealed to me, you know. I mean, concept wise, sounds cool, but just I don't know, shaky camera thing kind of loses me. And I bet you if I did sit down and watch it, I'd probably go, oh, okay, it's not too bad, it's pretty enjoyable. But mostly maybe. that's where it lost me at. Maybe I like it more now. I didn't like Cloverfield when I saw it. I didn't see it in theaters. I saw it on. I ever saw it when I came on DVD. So I might like it now if I rewatched it with certain things in mind. But to me, like all the characters seem kind of like just generic, kind of like, oh man, we got to get away from the from the big monster. Yeah, no, just very generic kind of New Yorker, you know, kind of like you know yuppies. So I didn't really care for the movie that much. I didn't hate it. I didn't dislike it. I was just kind of like, yeah, whatever about the yeah. whole thing. And um. I think in concept it could be cool, but just, you know, it was just the, co like, you know, kind of a God Godzilla kaiju-esque, like, attack from the from the perspective of, of a handheld camera sounds interesting, but mm -hmm. it was just kind of whatever to me. Where this one really, like, when I just, all I had to do was see the trailer, and you just see Mary Elizabeth Winstead, like, my favorite modern actress, John Goodman, one of the greatest actors of all time. And then there's that other guy. He's, he's, he's still really good, too. Who's the other guy? He looks familiar. I can't, I can't remember his name, but, yeah, he does look familiar. It's just them in this bomb shelter, and they just, they're just they playing that 70s song over it and everything like that. And you just see it's like, fuck, they're down there. They're playing games. They're watching movies. They're having a good old time. And then all of a sudden, you see like Mary Liz is trying to escape from there. And John McGoodman going, like, no, don't fucking go. And I was just sold. It was like, I could care less about, like, if you just told me there was like, oh, there's a Cloverfield 2 coming out. I'd be like, yeah, like I'm going to go see that. But then you see this trailer, it's like, you can really change things around if you just make a movie completely different than, like, the one beforehand, mm -hmm. you know? And what I kind of like is this movie's almost done, so almost like a Twilight. It, that To me, it feels like a long episode of The Twilight Zone. And I think that makes it so cool. And what I like is it's, it's a total simple movie. I mean, the bomb shelter is pretty much the entire movie. But that's, like, the cool part about it. And it's just, it's this intense movie. That's the best word I can use to describe it. It's intense. It starts off that Mary Elizabeth Wednesday, she's just kind of driving home. Her ex-boyfriend kind of calls and stuff, but she doesn't really want to answer it and so on. She keeps going. And all of a sudden, she gets in this car crash. She wakes up in this bomb shelter. Well, she didn't know it's a bomb shelter yet, but she wakes up kind of in this room, almost like a hostel-like room. And she's tied, or she's like handcuffed to the wall on a mattress, just sitting there going, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I was in this car accident, and here I am. And all you start hearing this, like, sound of somebody coming downstairs to down, down, down. And then there's this big metal door, and it opens up, and John Goodman's standing there. And it's almost kind of scary. But then when John Goodman kind of talks, he's kind of like, oh, well, you know, oh, I, you know I, I found you. I, I brought you down here and stuff. I, I saved your life or whatever. And she's like, what the fuck's going on? He's like, oh, no worries. And then, like, he gives her, like, these, like, she kind of injures her knee. So he gives her some crutches and all this stuff. He's like, it's fine. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. And then he goes back up and goes upstairs. And then she starts fucking taking the crutches, breaks them off, turns into like a spear. And the cool thing about Mary Elizabeth Wynn said she's very like, she's ready to defend herself. She's not a weak character whatsoever. It's like in the Thing prequel. She's just this really strong female character. And I almost feel that's kind of like her niche now. Is She's just kind of like a strong horror movie character, if anything. Because that's sort of what this movie is. It's a mix of like a horror movie a suspense movie and throw some comedy into it too. Just, just enough. Really, comedy. And it works in good ways because it almost like you can have a scary moment, like John Goodman coming down the stairs and stuff and going, Oh, what the fuck's going on? And then, you know, once you kind of, you know, they have a battle and everything like that, 
she kind of realizes like what's going on he's like oh you know there was there's a attack above there was you know if, you know we don't even know what it is it could be the russians it could be aliens it could be all this stuff but i brought you down to my shelter it's it's safe down here you don't have to worry you know well what about my my friends loved ones they're they're all gone they're all dead you know we we got to stay down here and the, you know at first she's kind of like well, did this guy just fucking kidnap me like what the hell's going on like i don't know what this you know attack is and it kind of plays with this going back and forth like you know, you almost kind of go, did something happen up there or did it not? Like, it does it so well that, I mean, you, I mean, you kind of know that something happened up there because it's a Cloverfield movie. That's where I almost feel this movie, for anybody who had no idea what Cloverfield was and just kind of went into this second movie, I feel like it'd be an amazing experience because you'd be watching it and you'd be like, you would, because you wouldn't know about these aliens or anything like this going on. All you would think about was like, oh, fuck, they're in a bomb shelter. And then you kind of go along with the characters, how they're reacting. Like, is it is it real? Did this guy just capture? And then it goes on. And then they finally start to get to a point where, like, they're like, okay, I, I guess it is, you know, bad up there. And, you is a, you know, the audience member watching it, not knowing any of this stuff, you can play out. And then by the time they finally do get up to the top and finally escape, and it's all this cool stuff, I don't even want to spoil that. You realize that, like, oh, fuck, there's these aliens out there. Like, I think that would be a mind-blowing moment because you'd be thinking the whole time, like, maybe it's North Korea. Maybe it's the Russians. Maybe it was even something else went off. Maybe a contaminant got out. Maybe it's, like, Resident Evil. Maybe there's you, you, zombies, something like that. And just to get out there and be like, it's fucking, like, these giant alien creature things. Fucking, I think that would be so cool just to show it to somebody who had no idea of any of the previous stuff. I guess one thing about this movie is it was not entirely sure of it being um, somewhat like in the same world or kind of something around the lines of it being like Cloverfield as a uh, Twilight Zone. Like Twilight Zone, it's like different words. stories. Different stories each movie. It just happens to have kind of a similar tone and a similar vibe. Uh, so you never saw Cloverfield. So spoilers right here for anybody, but like, do the monsters? You, you can tell me. It's I, it won't bother me. I'm, I'm just curious to know if this is in the same world. Do the monsters look kind of like staple removers on spider legs? Yeah, I'd say something like that. I, I think okay. I think they're kind of similar to that. And then there's like almost like these huge like battleship looking alien creatures too at the end. But and they look kind of like they. Straight yeah. up, I feel like that's not really too much of a spoil because. The only way that would spoil it for somebody is if somebody just had no knowledge of the first Cloverfield. Mm-hmm. but since even it's like once once like i've never seen cloverfield but it's like i kind of already know like the concept of it so that kind of going into this movie you kind of know well that's what's out there if if the things bite into you did it leave you with an infection that makes you explode several minutes later or something they didn't have that the only thing they had is like the creatures would drop like this gas out which i guess that's sort of a spoil thing and it would kind of like infect people and make them kind of like their skin all mutate off and just get destroyed and and they show that in PG-13, or is it more they show the early signs of it, they, and they just cut away? They kind of do cutaways. They, it's it's one of those movies, like, they still keep it, like, intense enough. It's PG-13, but it almost doesn't really feel PG-13. You know? I guess, because here's how it is. It's almost like sort of a psychological, like, horror movie, almost in the way that, like, sort of like The Shining feels or something like that where that's almost how they're using the horror. It's There's not really jump scares. I mean, they, you know, there's probably a couple. Like, you know, you can't really, like, have a movie without having those. It just kind of happens. But it's more just that fact of, like, playing, like, who's good, who's... Well, you, Mary Elizabeth Winston, you kind of know she's good the whole time. But John Goodman's kind of the character that's like, is he a real good guy? Is, is he kind of a weird guy? Is he kind of a creepy guy? And even in the end of the movie, you still don't really know. You still don't know. Because he could kind of go any of these directions... You're kind of going on the assumptions of what the other characters kind of make from him, you know, and it's just hmm. I could he's kind of like this guy who's sort of like serious. He's like, hey, you can come into here. I let you you can eat my food. I, you know, I'm not really that great of a cook, but, you know, make yourself at home. We got all the stuff here. You can watch my DVDs. Just make sure you put them back in the case when you're done. You know, like he goes through this whole list like of like almost like this. It would remind me of a sort of like when you go to like one of those friends houses where like they'd have that dad. Or, or parent, in a sense, that was kind of, like, really picky about how everything went. And you, as a kid, you're kind of like, oh, dude, your dad's fucking lame. But, like, you, you know, like, those kind of dads <laughs> you go to where it's like, hey, hey, 
you guys can't be over here doing this. Do not get near my car. Don't touch this. Don't, you know, and he's just kind of like, yeah, yeah. And then, because, you know, other houses you're at, you're just like, the parents are cool. They're like, hey, man, fucking go in there. You know, the pantry's open, bro. You know, do whatever you want. And as, that's, as, that's, as a kid, you hear. Just stay away from my stash, bro. I just can't, you know, too, too young for that shit. Yeah, man. but, you know, you go out the beef jerky, the Oreos, man. Like, I don't fucking care. I'm just kind of tripping right now. I'm just everything. Everything's so heavy. I can't really take it in right now, bro. <laughs> but no, it's like hey, John. You get the cool stat. <laughs> yeah, John Goodman. He kind of has that like sort of seriousness. He's like, "This is my room. It's kind of off limits, and it's just that's about the only thing." He's like, "I just, you know, I want to have my own space. I want to know that that's kind of like where I can go. But everything else is kind of cool." And just they have just these. There's totally intense moments in the film. I, I know I'm using that word a lot, but that's – I feel that that describes it because I like how it goes. It could be, hey, we're all laughing. We're having all a good time. And all of a sudden, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like one of these moments where like John Goodman's got somebody up against the wall like, don't fucking do that again. You know, If you're going to be in my place, I want you to follow my rules. This is how we're going to survive. Like one of those kind of things going on. And I'll tell you like I, that movie – I watched the trailer. I'm like, that looks fucking awesome. I can't wait to go there. By the time I was done watching that movie, I was like, it was even better than I thought it could have been. It was really fucking awesome. And it was different. Okay. It, was, it was one of those movies, like, I like because it felt fresh. It felt like, I've never really seen that before. I've seen things similar to this. I guess the closest movie that's like this is Blast from the Past. But it's like Blast from the <laughs> Past if Blast from the Past was an intense With balls. Thing. Yeah. And I love Blast from the Past. Don't get me wrong. That's one of my favorite kind of Brandon Fraser comedies. But th that's what this movie is. It's just this really intense one. And I, I can't really think of another movie that where they just kind of hang out in a bomb shelter for most of the film. And but there's there like the thing I think it makes it interesting is the people aren't totally connected. It's like there's John Goodman and the other guy. Apparently he helped work on the bomb bomb shelter with John Goodman, but it wasn't like he was invited in there. He like kind of like the second that shit went awry, he fucking booked it there and you know got in the shelter with John Goodman like. Mm -hmm. And then Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she ends up kind of being kind of trapped because John Goodman actually runs into her trying to get home in time, you know, just driving like a maniac. And from that accident, he takes her in, too, just because, like, he felt responsible. Mm -hmm. so, no, yeah, I get you. I get you. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though, because, like, in the bomb shelter, it's like you look at all, like, John Goodman's supplies, and there's, like, there's, like, a copious amount of candy in there. <laughs> Like and sodas and all this stuff. Like it's almost like he didn't just put the like the you know the things you need to survive. It's more like, well, fuck, if I'm gonna be down here, I'll be having a good time. Might as, might as well enjoy yourself, you know. Yeah, but no, I I heavily recommend that movie, especially in the theater too. I think that will make it a really cool experience. I mean, maybe it's just like I don't know. It's almost once the combination of John Goodman, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. This whole story around it, the simplicity of it too, I think makes it really a neat film. And does it make you want to see the original? Not really. I I, I will say I, I still don't feel like because this movie's so different. I almost feel like it doesn't even need the Cloverfield name. I'm I'm not even too sure why they even used it. This movie could have totally been called something else. The only thing I could think is that they've said somebody kind of said, well, you know what? That will increase its sales by like twenty percent if you just throw that name in there. Well, it was one of those movies because it just ends, you know, when nearly one person kind of gets away in the middle of it. Everybody else dies. Uh, spoilers for a movie that came out in 2007, 2008. But anyway, um, and it's one of those things where it just kind of ends with no real um, closure on what it is, which I think it's fine. It's just a monster movie when it gets down to it. But um, – a lot of people were kind of waiting for J.J. Abrams, even though he only produced that movie. I don't think he wrote or directed it. I think he only produced it. I think movie. so, Maybe too. But for some it. reason, he gets like more credit for it than... J.J. Abrams gave us... Rather than the director. Maybe the, the same director like, of this one. Fuck you. Fuck you, J.J. Abrams. Take I think all it was, my fucking... I don't even know. He's like fucking like European or something like that. But. I, I think it's because like that's when... Now he's the Star Wars guy and the Star Trek guy, where before he was like the huge like TV producer. So I think that's kind of like what they were writing on before. But, um, that, w that was a movie that whenever he was doing something sci-fi oriented, they would kind of like, uh, like when super eight was coming out, a lot of people were kind of like, Oh my God, is this, is this, the, is this the, uh, prequel to Cloverfield? That's what a lot of people thought. And I never saw the movie, but I guess it wasn't. So, Oh yeah. That was one of the ones that looked kind of interesting, but yeah. 
Or no, was it called Super Eight? Or no, no, yeah, there was Super Eight. It was, it was like it was <laughs> no, it's a sequel yeah. to fucking Eight Millimeter. <laughs> Super <laughs> Eight is a science fiction prequel to a draw to a crime drama about snuff films. <laughs> one has kids in it. One has Nicolas Cage in snuff films. Yeah, <laughs> but um. No, this Cloverfield movie, it might be one of those ones, like, I almost feel like it might have been, at first, it was not a Cloverfield movie. It was just, somebody had this sweet script. And then I felt like they probably got to it and said, you know what? We could just throw that Cloverfield lane out there. Maybe they had this idea the whole time. They're like, maybe we always want to make just, like, a bunch of, like, Twilight zone -y. Like, that's what Cloverfield is. It's like a Twilight Zone, where you can have all these random-ass stories that really have no connection to each other, but they all fund fall under the same title. Which is cool because I'd love to see that concept come back because I like that. It's like Creep Show and other movies back in the day that would do it, but we don't get that anymore. Or even like um, um, Tales from the Crypt is another one, sort of like that. So I think that's maybe that's what they were going with the whole time. And then now it's just kind of like that's how it is. Or maybe in, they just said, hey, fuck it. We can just throw this all together. Slap J.J. Abrams name back on there again. Throw the Cloverfield thing out there. That movie was popular enough that people will come in no matter what to go see it because they liked either the first one or the trailer will sell it to the people who didn't even care about the first one. But I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it could go both ways. Like, in my personal opinion, like, it would have sold it to me if you just would have called it, like, you know, John Goodman's fucking bomb shelter and just gave me that same tra the trailer, I would be there in a fucking heartbeat. <laughs> Still, like, no matter what, I was sold on that trailer. I was not even sold on the title. It was like the title. Like, I watched that trailer and I was like, holy fuck, I am so there for that movie. And at the very end, it's like, it's a Cloverfield movie? It was just like, oh, okay. Well, I'm still fucking there. I mean, but, but I was almost like confused at the end. Um, I think it's one of those things where like a lot of people are kind of like, a lot of people are confused. Like, wait, like he was doing a cold Cloverfield movie this whole time. Like, well, yeah, they didn't have to go shoot on location. They were just shooting on like a, like in like a bomb shelter the whole time. So that's a perfect way to like film a movie secretly. Cause that was a movie that just kind of came out of nowhere. Oh, it literally, know? cause that trailer only came out like a month ago. It came out like on the Deadpool mm -hmm. or something like that. Maybe, maybe a movie before that, but yeah. And so it just kind of popped out and you just said, Hey, here's this movie, which really, if you just, this is one of those kind of films that if you just shot it with, you know, just regular Joe actors, like it would cost probably very little to make this film. Like almost nothing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like John Goodman's probably the most expensive part. Maybe Mary Elizabeth Winstead, but I think having John Goodman in it and Mary Elizabeth Winstead and the other guy, because he's good too. I feel bad for not knowing his fucking name, but they're all three just super actors. And the thing is, is that's pretty much it. Other than that though, there's, there's like one other like actress who's barely in it for a little bit and a couple of voiceovers and that's your whole movie. Oh, that sounds – the simplicity of it makes me want to see it even more right now. Yeah, you got to go see it. It, it I, Yeah, I will say probably the, one of the most impressive movies I've seen in a long while. And I think it's just because it's so surprising. It's just – it's something new. It's fresh. Does it take place like in um, – kind of like in, in New York? Like not New York City but kind of like – I think like it's in Texas actually. Texas? Okay. Well, I think it's kind of cool they're just focusing on a different area then. Yeah. So maybe it's like you know a different area of the attack – or something like that. Maybe that, maybe that's how it's all tied together. It's like everything's based on these attacks and maybe they'll make other movies and it's just like how different people react to these attacks and so on. I think that would be kind of a cool concept for a Cloverfield movie. Like maybe each one is almost like a different genre. Like another one could be them, like not a, not a, not a camera film, but already maybe years after the attack and like people resistance just, fighters or something like that. Like, just kind of people living out, like, in, like, I guess, demolished buildings trying to just survive, like a survival horror movie, you know? Yeah, that that could be cool, too. I, I think there's a lot of stuff you can do with it, and I think the idea of doing it in that Twilight Zone thing, or even, like, Outer Limits or something like that, that's smart. Because nobody's cornering that market anymore. You you probably already know this, but Halloween was originally supposed to be that. They, came, they had the first two Halloween... They were originally going to do, like, uh, each Halloween movie was going to be its own... Um, like, Halloween... Yeah, then like people are like, well, people love the first Halloween so much. Let's make another one about Michael, and then we just go back to what we were originally going to do. And then by the time the third one comes out, people are like, where the fuck is Michael? Like, well, no, that's not like what we were planning to do. It was like each one's own story. Michael's not in it. Fuck you. Like, all right, we'll put Michael back in it. All right, okay, here you go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, people flipped, and then from that point on, you Which, get. I never saw Seasons of the Hell. Witch, but it's one of those things that oh, I just thought was kind of funny. Well, we thought we were just trying to be creative. Fuck that, fuck Michael. You know, okay, we're sorry. Fuck. Clearly, we know that's all you're coming to the theater to see is Michael. It's like goddamn right it is. But 
speaking of another movie that kind of came out around this time too, but we haven't got to talk about yet was, did you see um, London Has Fallen? Came no, out the week really, prior. I didn't really. Well, we, you remember me when I saw the first one. I didn't really. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. It's like you weren't totally like fancied into it. I mean, I mean, I wasn't like, and I and I love like you know big shoot 'em up action movies. I'm not, and you know, I didn't really hate the movie. It just, and I, 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 I think looking back on it, the movie's probably a little bit more self aware than it led on. But I don't know. Um, I didn't really see that one. Yeah. Well, you probably wouldn't care for London's Fall. If you didn't care for Olympus has fallen a whole lot, like London has fallen is more like, hey, did you really love the fuck out of Olympus has fallen? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, get ready for some more. And that's pretty much what it is. Which to I, me, it's like, fucking A, right. I'm, I was there in a heartbeat. And I was like, this movie's fantastic. I love the hell out of it. It's, you know, it's action. They got fucking one liners in it. Because to me, it's, it's what's missing in action movies. You know, for the longest time, like pretty much the 2000s, like we got a lot of good action movies. But they weren't the you know, they weren't classic style, you know. They were they were modern. They were slick. They were always everybody was stealing from the Matrix. And don't get me wrong, that's fun. Yeah, that's cool. But there is like I was missing the one liners. I was missing the slight over the topness. But where they almost make things kind of serious, but that almost makes it kind of funny. And that's what I love about Limbus's Fallen is like I felt like I was back in the '90s again, you know, watching fucking Harrison Ford watching Nicolas Cage, watching all these guys fucking back at it. And you got Gerald Butler in it, kicking ass. And then this, and, then, and they, they do more with, um, fucking, what's his name? Two-Face. Aaron Eckhart. Aaron Eckhart. And the second one, he's kicking more ass, you know, for being the president. I mean, not like he's like, you know, shooting people left and right, but he does fire a gun off. He does kill some people. So you get that in it. Well, here's the thing, just so I don't come across as like some movie snob, because I do love, you know, like movies like Die Hard and like any, like most things starring Arnold and uh, Swiss Stallone and, you know, but I guess when I saw um, Olympus Has Fallen, it just seemed kind of like on autopilot. Well, this is what a Die Hard wannabe movie would do. So we're going to do that right here, which maybe if I saw it again, maybe I feel different about it. But the whole movie, there's like two or three moments that seemed that kind of stood out to me like, okay, that's pretty cool. Like when the big ass jet was coming down and firing down at like Washington DC and just <laughs> taking fuckers out left and right. Like, like, no, that, like, fuck you America. Yeah. Like that part was pretty cool. You know, um, I, I remember, I remember like, I want to say the part where, even though it's like, why didn't you use those at the beginning, but the part where the mini guns or the missile launchers <laughs> come out of the top of the white house, which they could have used at the beginning, but whatever, you know, yeah. it, it's, it, it's one of those, it's just one of those things. Well, we wouldn't have got that. We wouldn't have had our act two or act three if we didn't have that. So fuck it, whatever. But like, that was a cool scene. So there are things that stood out to me. I just didn't think it was as good as other diehard ripoffs. Like it wasn't air force one or it wasn't, you know, it like, um, it wasn't, uh, fuck. What's the name of it? I'm drawing a blank on it right now. Uh, under siege. not under, not under siege, but, um, shit it's a because well, that's kind of how it's a denzel fun. one i'm drawing a blank on but on the name of it but fuck it whatever uh but no anyway it like it was it was it was you know entertaining it just nothing that stood out to me yeah like i, I really loved olympus has fallen like that was when i owned that movie i've seen it a couple times since then like to me it was like oh we're fucking back like that's how i that's how i felt like fucking we're back a dinosaur story but not like anything <laughs> that title wise and even though i will say there's another one you should check out you might not like as much as i did but is check out the White House is down. That movie actually almost might be better than Olympus has fallen. <laughs> like, and it's weird because it's PG thirteen, and I did not think that one would be as good. Like, I was like, I, I picked it up for like two bucks on Blu-ray at like a thrift store or something, and I was, and I sat down and watched. I was like, I don't know. It it is it is just as good as Olympus has fallen, and it might be slightly better. <laughs> People told me that one is like intentionally like it doesn't. It's almost kind of like deadpan, like satire. Like it's almost kind of like. They have like very intentional kind of cheesy one liners, but it's like the movie acts like it's unaware of it, but kind of is. You know what I mean? That's what I was told. So kind of like a Fast and the Furious movie. That's like yeah, that's a good example. I would of, say like, that that's actually a really good example of how it feels because it's still serious. It's not like it's a comedy or anything like that. I mean, it's got a little bit, of, you know, cheeky one liners and good stuff like that. Like it's a fun movie and it's not maybe nearly as serious because Olympus has fallen almost takes itself like that real serious like this is you know the end of America coming here now we are going to deal with it like mm -hmm. one of those kind of films where more like White House is down it's like 
you know, like, holy fuck, I gotta protect the president here. <laughs> We're gonna fucking take these fuckers out. Even though it's PG-13, so they're not saying fuckers, but... Well, one of the things on Olympus has fallen that was funny, it was just, like, they were trying so hard to piss off every, like, war veteran ever. Just, like, you see the flag fall. Like, after, like, they take over the White House, you see, like, the CG American flag, like, torn up, slowly fall to the ground. You know, there's just some Fox News watching old man there just, like, grip in, like, the handlebar, the, like, the, the sidearms of the seat, just like... <laughs> <laughs> no, just like gritting his teeth. Well, that's like both Olympus has fallen and uh, London has fallen. They're like they're such like like this American patriot like movie. But I don't know what it is. I I, I seem to like like that kind of like over the top patriotism in a film. It's weird because does, that doesn't seem like that would be my kind of thing. But I don't know what it is. When it comes to a movie, I love it. It's like yeah, fucking America, goddamn right. Like and it <laughs> is the like part... thing where it's like even in the second one, it's because like in, you know in the first one, it's like there's like. The evil North Koreans. And in this one, it's kind of like, you know, the evil, like, terrorists. They're supposed to be like, you know, Al-Qaeda or fucking ISIS or something like that. They're supposed to be a group there. So it's like, we got to make sure we take those brownies out of fucking London. <laughs> <laughs> there was... A... He says, like, he's got a better tan than me. He must be working with him. Just like, oh, God, there's a guy in a turban. Shoot him. <laughs> But no, there is like, uh, what was it? There was, uh, there's the part in the first one that just like, because what would always happen is just like, we need three like IDs in order to like get the, uh, in order to get like the missile codes and like the president's like, you won't fucking get them from me. You know, then he just like, like twists his arm like, oh, okay, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you know, and then just like, you won't like, she's like, we need the next code now. Like, fuck you, I ain't saying shit. Like. You need the next code. Come on, man. Just well, give it to this, us. You know, this lady right here. Okay, okay. The next code is... Okay, okay, okay. All right. We're down to the last code. We need one more code from you. Fuck you. Not happening. I just, just you know, twist his arm. Okay, okay. Ow, ow. Just it's the code. Up, just starts kicking him in the balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's happened. Like, it happened, like, three times in that movie. They just, like... The, I think the first two times they put a gun to someone else's head... And the last time, it's just like, you don't even see what they do. They don't even show them say the code. It's just like, they had to just, like, twist his arm or, or something. Or just, like, maybe just, I don't know, maybe they, like, stepped on his foot a lot. I don't know what the fuck they did. But you just, okay, they got the code somehow. Yeah, they, they definitely kind of, I will say that's the one thing is they fit Aaron Eckhart's character a little bit better in this one. Like, he's, I mean, he's still, like, you know, just regular president. I think they don't want to just make him, like... It's not like fucking Harrison Ford where it's like, I can fucking save this plane <laughs> single hand. Get off my plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is like so bad. Because that's like what you want. Is you're like, I want a president who fucking can fight off terrorists in a plane. Fight off, um, what's his name? Gary Oldman. <laughs> Russian Gary Oldman. Yeah. But no, I, I personally love that London has fallen. I could see how some people would, that wouldn't be there kind of thing. But... It, it, it was really good, but I would say it's, it's about on par with Olympus Has Fallen. You know, I probably wouldn't say it's it's not like it's any better, but it's not it, not worse. It's just even. So if you really Maybe fucking I'll... loved Olympus, you'll really love London. If you did, if you, okay, if you thought Olympus was okay, you'll probably think London's okay. I'll probably wait for it to come on Netflix in that case. But, you know, I mean, I wouldn't mind checking it out eventually. But, you know, um, it... I'll say regardless, I mean, regardless, even if I didn't really care for Olympus Has Fallen that much, it gave us a good podcast, I thought, so the next day. But um, yeah. I'll say... Fucking A, right. Hell, I, I, I got that movie on Blu-ray. I, I, I'm speaking of, like, patriotism and all that. Did you see, did they, by chance, show the newest trailer to Captain America 3? They, I didn't see a scene in theaters. I had to watch it online like a heathen. But Same thing here. But which is right. like a bummer. I wish I really wish trailers just premiered in the theaters. Like I hate this premiering online thing. It's fucking bullshit because it ruins the experience of watching a trailer. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still watch it anyway, just because it's there and I got time to kill. So why not? But it, there is something so much more special, at least something like going back to Cloverfield. I saw that trailer in theaters. Like that's how it surprised me. And it made the experience so much better. And I wish more movies would do that, but whatever. But speaking of which that Captain America trailer Here's kind of my only thing, though. I look at that movie, I'm like, why is it called a Captain America movie? It's like, it is literally Avengers 3. You got everybody in there. With the exception of Thor and Hulk. I guess that's true. Thor and Hulk aren't in it, so... But, I mean, it's like you got Ant-Man, you got Black Panther, you got Iron Man, you got Hawkeye, you got Wasp, you got 
fucking Black Widow, Captain America, Bucky, Falcon. I guess you can't call it Avengers 2.5. I mean, like, there there is more characters in this Captain America movie than there is in the Avengers. <laughs> He, I mean, look, I think it's one of those things, like, I will give the Captain America franchise this, because I think what's interesting about the Captain America movies, each movie is different than something else. Now, we won't know until this movie comes out. Maybe it's just like, um, maybe it's just like a Winter Soldier, but with more, like, characters in it. But, I mean, each movie, like, the first one's kind of like, a, a, like a, you know, Golden Age Rocketeer, yeah, yeah, yeah. director makes sense. This is a Rocketeer adventure story with a lot of you know, and then the second one, it's much more of kind of like a uh, conspiracy theory action film. Mm-hmm. This one looks more of like just kind of like a, a, I'm not complaining about this, but I guess kind of like I guess a politically charged, uh, a politically charged superhero movie, which sounds weird saying. That's kind of what the second one was, but more so in this one, a lot more superhero stuff, a lot more science fiction in this one. Yeah, well, that's what I'm not complaining whatsoever. I just feel that it just seems kind of weird, just kind of watching. It. It's just you feel that the movie's just going to be called Captain America. That it would probably focus on Cap couple other characters but mostly everything would be captain oriented you know what i mean and I'm, it just almost feels like this should just be called captain america versus iron man like that's how the like civil war like i i feel that it seems kind of like they're blowing or the just title. marvel civil war yeah like i just feel like they're blowing the captain america title but i mean maybe you watch the movie and it's like oh it's just all from captain america's perspective like it's just his inner monologue the whole time and it's like oh okay i see why it's called captain america but i have a feeling that it's, I mean, like, maybe it is going to be first and foremost a Captain America movie. Maybe, like, the first, like, third of the movie is all Captain. Nobody else, really. You know, there's Bucky, there's Falcon, there's all your Cap characters, and that's it. And then maybe at the second act, halfway through there, that's when Iron Man starts to appear. And then the third act, that's when we see everybody else start appearing. Like, maybe, it, and then it would seem, okay, I, I kind of get it. Now it seems more like a Captain America movie. I mean, no matter what, I'm not complaining. Like, it is. But... I feel like it's sort of diluting Captain America's, like, screen time for the fact that we're watching a Captain America movie. I know that, like, it, it just seems like I'm watching an Avengers movie that just happens to have that Captain title. I I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm really excited for this movie, but I think it's one of those things where it is going to be mostly from Captain's perspective. And then on top of that, I think that each what Marvel's trying to do is I think they realize that their formula, because, all, like, all their movies are good. All, all the Marvel DC... Marvel DC, you fuck. All the Marvel Universe movies are good, Mm -hmm. but I think they're starting to realize that they're somewhat formulaic. They're good, but they're all going to have the same tone. They're all going to have the same vibe. So now they got to up the ante each movie. And and if if they're they're not trying something different, they at least got to up the ante. In this case, before it'd be one of those things like, okay, we got Batman versus Superman coming out. It's in the title. So what they're doing here is, I mean, I'm not sure how long, what, what they're, what was, if this was planned, how much of this was planned later or, not, or anything, but I think this one, they're trying to do something along the lines of it being, um, a, you could have all these other characters in it and it's still called Captain America because that's what would happen in the comic. In the comic, there wouldn't be a big deal if Batman went up against Superman for a minute or if he teamed up with Green Lantern, for, it wouldn't be a big deal. It would just happen and they just kind of carry on, but it primarily be from Batman's perspective. I think Ant-Man being a heist movie and then all of a sudden Falcon drops in out of nowhere, which was legitimately surprising to me. Yeah. That right there was something that was just kind of like, okay, that's actually, I didn't see that coming. That's kind of cool how they just dropped an Avengers character in there. Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah, no, yeah. And I said, like, Captain America 3 looks totally badass. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be fantastic. I still think the Spider-Man one, it's like, no, okay. It's. I think they're just gonna get to a point where there's gonna be like too many Avengers characters, and there's just not enough time to focus on them. But what, whatever. You know, I, I'm one of the few people that I kind of just. I, I was fine if Sony kept making their fucking Spider-Man movies because I, I bet you the third Amazing Spider-Man movie was gonna be like extremely sweet, but nobody wanted to fucking see it because everybody was being little bitches. So, whatever. I mean. Uh, it seemed like, you know, those those fans that wanted Spider-Man to be part of the Avengers, I guess they got their wish there from somebody who just likes Spider-Man. I could kind of care less, but, but it's fine. It does it does it doesn't bother me, but I don't think it's necessary kind of thing. Well, he eventually did become an Avenger, and I'm fine well, with Well, yeah, like in the comics, yeah, there's that, but when it comes to movies, there's just only so much screen time. And I feel no. it, it it's it's kind of like the Cap the Camp America 3. You have all these characters in here it's just sort of like, it's not really a Captain America story. I mean, obviously, maybe, yeah, it's going to be 
first and foremost from his kind of perspective. But I hope that, like, I guess for Captain 4, I hope it goes back to being kind of like, okay, here's just Captain America and here's him doing, you know, his thing with maybe one or two other partners and that's it. I feel like, um, here's the thing about the Spider-Man thing, is even though, I mean, we could talk about this trailer and in detail about everything that happens, but when it gets down to it, you don't walk away knowing anything new. You kind of walk away knowing everything everything that's already, that you already got from the first trailer, just more action. <laughs> well, the one thing that I thought and was this... weird, I paused it towards the end because I just wanted to look when they were doing like the, pretty much like the X-Men, the animated series thing where they're running at each, other. At each other. I paused and I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, the characters were off differently than like what I thought they were going to be. It was like, oh, so like, who was it? It's like the characters that were on, there were some characters on Iron Man's side, like Vision. Like I'm like, well, I guess I'm surprised Vision's on his side. Yeah, for some reason, I just like I, I mean, I guess it makes sense since it's um, Jarvis in a sense by that standard. Like, so I got there, but it just seemed weird because if Vision almost feels like he'd be more on Captain's side, and the other thing was kind of weird too is how Black Widow's sort of on Iron Man's side, even though she was buddy buddy with Captain America before. But maybe that's supposed to be kind of like the turn of events there. At least fucking Cap's got Hawkeye and Falcon, Ant Man, and he's kind of got like Cap the has- he's sort of got the better characters on his side. Even though I'll I like say Vision that, like, a lot, but. I think, um, well, vi- like Iron Man's side has more of the stronger characters, like str- like physically stronger characters. But I think Captain has the cooler characters, and I, I mean, I, I honestly thought Black Panther would be on Captain's side, and Scarlet Witch would be like on Tony Stark's side. So yeah. actually, well, no, then again, she still has some bitter stuff towards Tony Stark because of the missile and that whole monologue in Avengers too. So never mind. Yeah, so that but, makes sense um, there. But I honestly thought, I guess they're just bouncing each other out. I honestly thought. Uh, Black Panther would be on Cap's side, but it was like, whatever. I mean, they're just, like you said, I don't think it's going to be really a Captain America movie. I think it's going to be more from his perspective, but I think, because you're going to have, they're going to, they're introducing uh, Black Panther, introducing Spider-Man. And this, like I said earlier, this trailer doesn't really say anything new other than Spider-Man. Yeah, that's the th- thing that's everybody's like talking about. like the big about. selling boys like, we got Spider-Man. They throw some cool, like, more action scenes in there and stuff, but that's kind of how it is. And then when Spider-Man kind of comes, he's got that voice like, hi guys, I'm Spider-Man. Like, like yeah, almost like fucking was like, Tony Stark like, was just like, he's like, Tony just raped me in the bathroom beforehand and said, be on my team or else. That, I'm not going to lie. Look, I'm, I think it's cool they got Spider-Man. I'm not one of those people like, oh my God, Spider-Man. I mean, I get what they're coming from because they have the whole Marvel universe. And I mean, there, there's a, hundreds of characters, but to have the Marvel universe and not have Spider-Man be a big part of it does seem a little weird. So I am happy that Disney got Spider-Man. I know. I know, I know, I know I'm not because I like Spider Man kind of like because I feel Spider Man has a big enough world by himself. He's like, not, not, I mean, I guess not as big as the X Men, but he has so much of his own people to like dick around with that it seems unnecessary for him to be thrown to the Avengers. Now, in the comics, that's different because you got, you know, thousands of issues that you can have so you can have this sort of stuff. But in movies, I feel like we haven't got to a point where we've had enough yet that to me, Spider Man could trot along for another like. 10 movies and still just focus all on his and i almost feel like the way that i sort of look at marvel i see about three different worlds i mean i guess you can say there's a little bit more than this but i feel like you almost have like the avengers sort of world you have the x-men world and then you sort of have the spider-man world but in the spider-man world that's also where daredevil and punisher and all those other kind of new york characters exist i mean i guess avengers in new york too but in fantastic four i feel fits more into like spider-man and all that kind of stuff well, I feel like uh, this movie. I mean, what was I going to say? We were on that. I mean, in all honesty, even though I would have probably saw Sp- Amazing Spider-Man three, and I probably would have saw the Black Cat, and I would have saw the Sinister Six, Six movie, I still would have enjoyed those probably. And I think they they probably would have been better by that point. But I think that you saw what Sony was doing, and Sony was literally overpacked. Hopefully, um, Batman vs Superman doesn't do this, but Sony just overpacked Amazing Spider-Man two because. The sad thing about that movie, in my opinion, is there is a good movie in there, and there is a good story. Yeah, I liked it. I, I thought it was all right. I mean, I, I mean, I liked it. I just, I, I enjoyed it. There's just so much shit going on, and it focused on shit that didn't need to happen. Like, I know Spider-Man's love life is a big part of the series, mm-hmm. but I think for one movie, we could have taken a break from his love life. Like, yeah, I'm with Gwen Stacy, awesome, cool. Yeah, you like, know, like, like, have like have... don't fuck it up. Like, he just should have had a part where like somebody puts his hand on his shoulder, like, Spidey, don't fuck this up. Like yeah, yeah, you know, he, he's with Gwen Stacy. Cool. And, you know, they get back, they get back together at the end, just long enough for her to fucking die, like we knew was going to happen. So it's just like, all right, no, just be together. So that's just one more plot line you don't have to deal with. 
And then, you know, this is partially the marketing pro- marketing uh, department's fault when they just at- throw in Rhino front and center when he's just like, oh, he's there at the end. You know, so mm-hmm. I think that it's like, and there's already so many other like plot points. And, like Harry was just kind of like, I'm sickly and I'm dying, yet I'm able to break into this high tech facility by myself and just like beat the fuck out of some armed guards who probably have 15 years of experience with this shit. Well, so I do think that Amazing Spider-Man Two, if you did not watch the trailer and you just watched the movie, I feel like the experience would probably be even better. Because I feel like all my negative mm-hmm. points are of that movie. I mean, yeah, there's some other things in there. They mostly is all because the trailer sort of lied. And I think that's kind of why that movie got such a bad rap is that in the trailer, you thought you were watching a Sinister Six movie. You thought Rhino was going to be a ma- major character. You thought all this stuff was going to happen in it. And then you realize that they're just like, no, those they're are all teasing almost, teasers. Those are teases, which would be totally fine if they were hidden in the movie and not the trailer. You would never complain. But I think since they were in the trailer, you just kind of felt like you were lied to. And I think that's sort of what was the downfall of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Because I think at its core... You know, it was a pretty good Spider-Man movie. I would say it's about mid-range for, from, for all the Spider-Man movies. Probably. I'd say it's around, I mean... Not as good as probably the first one and maybe the yeah, second one. Yeah, not as good as the first. I, I, I mean, well, let's see. Technically, I guess by this point, there's five yeah, there's Spider-Man five, movies. Yeah, five modern Spider-Man movies. That might be number four for me. That might be Spider-Man. That might be the fourth best one. You, you, like, you like Spider-Man, Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man more than that one? Yeah, I think I do because at least it felt Amazing more Spider-Man balanced. Is actually, a perfect movie in a sense. Just if, if it just didn't if, have. If, if, if it was the if it was the original Spider Man movie, it would be like the most perfect way to start that thing off. But its only downfall is the fact that there, we already had that ten years before. But like my favorite's probably. I mean, even though I know it's not the best movie, it's still a really good movie. My favorite's probably Spart the first the first Sam Raimi one. That's my favorite one. A lot of this. A lot of nostalgia there. But I know that number two is probably the better movie. And then we get to probably really, I mean, in all honesty, probably because I think the um, the Amazing Spider-Man, it is it is a good movie. It's just it's just we didn't need the prequel. Th- we didn't need the, the origin thing. We could have just hopped right in. And I think that it just, you know, mm-hmm. it we could have just jumped right in and being Spider-Man and not have whole, I, I thought like Martin Sheen was going to almost die within the first like 10 or 15 minutes of the movie. Then I realized he doesn't die till like roughly the fucking halfway point. What? You know? So, um, and this like, amazing Spider-Man too, like I said, I, even if I kind of had problems with that movie, I still would have gone and seen the next ones just cause you know, all right, well at least we got that out of the way and we can focus more on this other stuff, but they're just trying to j- jam t- and they're like teasing teasers. Uh-huh. That's the thing about the uh, Marvel Universe movies is they'll have teasers, but it's part of the story. This one was just blatantly like, look, we're teasing this, we're teasing that, but now we're never going to fucking see it because they're focusing too much on what they're going to do rather than this particular movie. And I think the thing is, is Amazing Spider-Man 3 would have been where they just had it perfectly dialed in because, you know, they would have fixed the mistakes they made in the first two, like the first one being actually totally a perfect movie, but the fact that it was an, an unnecessary origin, so we got that out of the way. Two, okay, yeah, they kind of just like cock teased us a little too much in that one. But now in three, they're like, okay, we okay, but we won't do that again. We could have all this, but that's I guess we're getting to a point where we're just talking about a movie that's not gonna happen. And yeah, whatever. I guess it's one of those ones. Like I personally, I guess I'm like one of the I'm like one of the very few people to be like, you know, I kind of wish Spider Man was still with Sony. I just kind of like when it's I, I don't know. I know it's all Marvel. You don't want Disney to have that much power. But yeah, I, I don't want Disney to have that. I don't like the idea of Disney having more and more power. It's like. I kind of like it. It almost splits the monopoly when it's like, okay, Fox has this section, Sony has this section, and Disney can have this section, you know? And it's sort of like, I, it's it's kind of nice that way, you know? It, I know that's all fucking Marvel, but at least it's, you know, but whatever. I'm not going to complain. Here's, here's the thing. Even if they didn't pass it over to Disney, one what Sony would have done. They would have licensed They would have just rebooted it anyway, again, just because, because they got scared, they would have got scared. So I think that it's just, I, and I think, in all honesty, I mean, I think they would have a better. I think Disney will have a better idea of what to do with it. Now, let me say this: regardless, even though I'm happy, they, I'm sure it'll probably turn out fine. And no offense to the kid playing him, but when he comes in at the very end of the of the, of the Captain America three trailer, I know that's the big. And I have no problem with the suit. The suit looks like they're trying to go more '60s Spider Man. Uh huh even though it sounds like they're trying to make it more like more ultimate Spider-Man, like amazing Spider-Man seemed like they're trying to go like halfway between like sixties or like original 60s Spider-Man and ultimate Spider-Man. Uh-huh. That seems to be its two main inspirations. They seem to be doing that, but almost with this one only, only kind of like more of like more six from what I've heard from what I've heard, like 60 style look, 
but ultimate Spider-Man storyline and characterization. That, that, that's kind of what it sort of seems like it's going for. I mean, just going, just going off this one image, but also stuff I've heard what they want to do later in the line. Now, here's the thing. I get that he's younger and they want to get a young guy so they can continue to make Spider-Man movies for the next 10, 15 years or so. Plus, but, I guess because everybody else is older, so excluding like Scarlet Witch and so on. So I think... I, but the thing is, it's like, I'm sick and tired of kind of seeing young Spider-Man. It's like, my Spider-Man, I like Spider-Man when he's like at least college age, if not older than that. That's to me, is I like, mean, I, that's the Spider-Man I grew up with. I never grew up with teenager Spider-Man. I never, that didn't come along till much later for me to see teenage Spider-Man. You look at the animated series, I like when he's like, you know, older, buffer, cooler, you know. Spider-Man, Here's older, the- buffer, cooler. <laughs> if we made it the tagline. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. The kid that's playing him, um, because he's Uh, like... Hi, guys. I'm Spider-Man. Well, that right there, it was like... Don't rate me. He's he's supposed to be like... I think the actor himself is like 16 or 17, from what I've heard. Yeah, he's literally a fucking kid. Which, that's fine. He's literally a fucking kid. It's it's fine if he's 16 or 17, because that's even what he was. Like He was like 15 or 16 in the comic, in in Ultimate Spider-Man. But... He doesn't even sound like he's 16 or 17. He's like 12. Yeah, he sounds like he's fucking 12. And no offense to that actor, but it was just like when he comes in, you see it's Spider Man. He's like, hi, everybody. That's the best thing he could have, that's the best thing he'd come up with. You can't have him say, kind of like, like, yo, yo, fuck your shield, bitch. (laughs) Like, they're Disney. They're fucking going for it. Like, you know what? We're going to offend a whole bunch of people. They're still going to see this fucking three. And then you just see fucking Spider Man, like, whipping his balls, like, on someone's face. Like, we're fucking Deadpool in this character now. The original (laughs) fucking guy off a mouth. (laughs) I will say, I think it's kind of cool that, like, apparently when they first meet him, he's going to have kind of like some tacky put together outfit. And then later, the way how he kind of gets, like, the more, like, this outfit is Tony Stark helped him make it. Yeah. And that's how he has the eyes like, that kind of, like, like, shift. Put the, and... put, put the fucking gimp suit on. Put it on, boy. Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Deleted scene. Just using Tony, a base. Tony's just fucking in a room. He's got Spider-Man, like, tied up against the wall. He's fucking drinking. Throws a bottle of whiskey at his head. <laughs> like, Spider-Man moves his head out of the way just in time. He's just like, I mean, my gimp, boy. <laughs> After a long day of fine crime. A man needs to do what a man needs to do, and a woman can't satisfy it. <laughs> you ever seen 8mm? <laughs> Not Super 8, 8mm. In fact, I got the star of that movie, Ghost Rider. <laughs> We're going to fuck the <laughs> shit out of you. <laughs> just like, oh, God, they're bringing Ghost Rider into it, too? He's like, yeah, but, you know, it's just another weird, like, fuck buddy that Tony has. <laughs> <laughs> they, they start, like, playing, like, they start playing, like, um... Some like like B track by George Michaels. He starts just strutting around the room. <laughs> he's, he's just got like underwear with, huh? <laughs> with this look like he wants to fight him. You know, like he's not even enjoying himself. He just like he's just like looking him in the eye. <laughs> like, are we seriously doing it? Yeah, we're fucking doing it. <laughs> After Deadpool, it's fucking balls out. That's what it, that's what that's the new slogan. <laughs> People are saying these movies are running together too much. We gotta prove it. We gotta make the one that stands out. <laughs> and we thought Captain America is the best way to do it because here's the thing: we can do all this shitty stuff, and as long as Captain America says that's wrong, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's that classic thing: you can get away with a character saying anything he wants as long as one of the other characters says that's not cool. <laughs> But no, no, regardless, it looks fucking badass. I mean, they'll do a totally fine job of Spider-Man. Um, that's only, like, light bickering that I kind of have, but... It's like, I'm fine with the suit. It's just that fucking... It's just his voice, like, hello, everybody. He doesn't <laughs> even sound like... He doesn't even say it kind of, like, all cocky or kind of, like, joke, like, hey, everybody, kinda, or something like that. How I you mean, would, I, just I like, know it's supposed to be early on Spider-Man, Hi. but I always just picture... Spider- the thing about Spider-Man is he's just kind of, like, confident. Like... That's, that's that's why, he, and I feel like he's more confident because he's got the suit on. It's that kind of weird thing where it's like, when he's Peter Parker, maybe he's a little bit more bumbling, but when he's got the suit on, it's like, everything's cool. He's always cracking one-liners, cracking jokes, talking the whole time during a fight. That's Spider-Man, you know? And I think that uh, it, even though as flawed as like the Amazing Spider-Mans kind of were, when he was in the suit as Spider-Man, he had it down, even the way how he was well, talking. I thought that actor was like the best Peter Parker out of all of them. 
Andrew Garfield, yeah, even though it's not my favorite Spider-Man franchise, I thought that he was probably the best Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, by and, far. I mean, don't worry, and, I like um, Toby, but... Toby did a good job, too, yeah. Um, but I will say, though, uh, I think something they're trying to do here, because even though, like, Ultimate Spider-Man could be a little... Even though he was, like, 15 or 16 in that, he was... This, this comic could get a little bit more darker and serious. Mm -hmm. I think what they're trying to do here is they're almost trying to... They realize they got a generation of kids that watch, even though it's a separate thing, watch the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, which was... He, which was a lot more kid oriented, of course. And yeah. he was. I didn't saw I, I've, the I've seen a couple episodes of it. It's actually it's it's good. It's it's kind of one of those shows where it can go kind of both ways, where it can be kind of a serious show, and then all of a sudden it can be kind of a little bit kiddy. But it was Very still fun. Like I still liked it. Like, I, is it an animated series? No, but it's pretty fucking cool. Still, I, I I wouldn't mind picking it up at some point. I know it's on Netflix. I haven't got around to watching it yet, but um, it's one of those things. Though, I bet they're trying to go with that because kids will recognize it. It's like, oh, he's the same age as me. It's like the cartoon I used to watch or I do watch still. I don't know if the show's still on, but yeah. Well, because I, I think I, mean, I understand why they go with Spider-Man like that. Because here's the thing. Uh, a fucking little kid, he doesn't relate to Captain America. That's his fucking grandpa up there on the screen. He doesn't relate yeah. to Tony Stark. That's like his drunken uncle up there on screen, <laughs> you know? He doesn't relate to the Hulk. That's just some nerd that gets all, like, you know, roid out. He doesn't relate to fucking Thor. He wants to relate to Thor, but he knows he never can because nobody can really relate to Thor, even though Thor is the god of the people. You know, so Spider-Man's the one guy that's just like, hey, I, I could be that guy, you know? You know, people I could have been Quicksilver, but he fucking died, so I guess that's... <laughs> I'll say this. I think that sometimes people make it out to be that like uh, producers make it out to be you need a character you can relate to mm -hmm. or kids need a character they can relate Even to. Even as a kid, I Which, would relate to Thor instantly and been like, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> I have long hair. He has long hair. Good enough. Yeah. Um, more of him with his shirt off. But you're a man. <laughs> I, more of him shirt off. That's the fucking game about to. it. <laughs> but no, um, I him, think it's more Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Less of... <laughs> And more Hawkeye, goddammit. Uh, everybody else wants fucking Hawkeye to die. That's my favorite character up there on screen. Do not kill him off. We're the two people that want Hawkeye to stay around. God damn it. But it's like, I feel like I'm like there. It's like, yay, Hawkeye. Like, please don't kill you off. I don't think they're going to kill him off for a while. I don't think so, but, either, but everybody else seems to want that. Because producers always make it out to be like, kids need a character they can relate to. And I think it's one of those things. In some context, yeah, I think that could work. But, I mean, my favorite character for a long time was Batman and still is my favorite character. So I think, you know, kids, I see so many kids dressed up like Iron Man. So I think when it gets down to it, who has the cool costume, who does, who has the coolest powers, I think is what it gets down to. Well, because I feel like there's two, way, there's two ways of relating, in a sense, I, I guess, or almost how you can look at a character. There's a character that either you can relate to because you're like, oh, fuck, that just feels like me and my friends, you know? There's that kind of relating, or there's the other kind where it's like, I really have nothing in common too much with Bruce Wayne, but I aspire to be like that guy. I look up exactly. towards somebody like that, and I think that's the other way, and that's kind of the thing is you don't always have to necessarily have the relatable character because you can have the character you can almost look up to. It's like Thor. It's like we aren't gods. We never will be, but he is the, he is the god of the people. Thor is who looks out for us. He is the one mm -hmm. who takes care of you know Earth, Midgar, so on. That's, you know, what I mean, like that. You you can still go, you can almost, in a sense, you can almost relate to that, even though you're, there's nothing relatable about it. Like something like Hulk, you can kind of say people relate to that because everyone, to some extent, feels kind of like an outcast, or some people have like Angry anger management issues. problems, you know. So I guess I you like can kind of like, if you want to get like if you can get like if you want to get philosophical, there is some way you could relate to Hulk in that aspect. But um, yeah, you know, I think I, I kind of get what they mean to some extent, where ki the kids want to character their own age to relate to i get that but i think that you don't always have to have that so that's when i hear like well we canceled fucking batman because you realize he's over the age of 20 so just like oh, fuck that yeah something <laughs> like that because like they should just go out and fucking interview a kid and go hey do you care that batman's 45 years old could be like no like what kid there's like that one kid is like i wish that there was a batman that was my age so I could relate to him. And it's like, don't fucking take that kid's opinion. Nobody likes that fucking kid. He's going to get beat up in school every single day. And then one day he's going to come back and murder everyone. But that's okay. That's beyond the point. <laughs> that kid's, that kid's going to be into something else entirely different in one yeah, year. He's going to be, be like, fucking like, Batman is so fucking stupid. I don't know why you guys are fucking watching that shit. Like, I'm into like fucking football and guns. 
And, no, it's not, no, it's not, he's not even that kid. He's that kid that says like, like I don't play um, anything that's on because every like there's always that. It's got to have kids. realistic graphics and scenarios, or I'm, I can't get into it. Batman is not realistic whatsoever. A grappling gun could not sustain his weight. There's that yeah. There's that there's that fucking asshole <laughs> in back like it's in the middle th- middle school through part of high school. There's always that one kid who's trying to prove he's mature and he's trying to prove he's smart by like smart 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 smart. Yeah, by trying to trying to like be cynical and kind of shit on everything by saying, well, it's not scientifically accurate that a man can get some kind of chemical in him and become made of clay. So I don't watch that. It's nothing that could ever happen. So it's just like. <laughs> Are you fucking serious right now? You watch Star Trek. Well, Star Trek aspires to something that we could have in an enlightened philosophy where we exchange knowledge. Yeah, shut shut the fuck up. We exchange knowledge by putting your dicks in each other's mouth. Well, no, I mean, that I mean, could I mean, happen I mean, in a certain just form of enlightenment. That might but... happen. <laughs> <laughs> now I always say uh, those are the kind of people that like I almost feel those are the fuckers too that like almost ruin something like Star Trek where that's why a lot of people never like like Star Trek is like I don't want to be like that fucker over there. it's the same thing with the Doctor Who fans <laughs> like technically once again I always say it's like I've never watched Doctor Who there's probably totally nothing wrong with that show it's the people that fucking like it though that make you go fuck no am I gonna watch that and I feel the same things happened with Star Trek over the last 40 years is you get people like that and people go fuck that show have you ever seen it before god no it's like the same fucking kid that like will watch like like I don't play Dead or Alive because there's that part where you knock someone off a cliff and they land on another cliff and you just get up and keep on fighting. It's, it's a fucking video game. Soul like Calibur that. is a button mashing game. Ah, the rooster. The rooster. Fuck the rooster. Fuck. This is all very. I mean, there's more than one rooster, but I'm taking most of this experience <laughs> from one particular example. Even though I've known multiple people kind of like that. I know he's he's kind of like another like you know if you had a jerk off Johnny. There's the rooster, too, who's just the most... I guess the, He's like the obnoxious fucking nerdy kid who really just takes everything so fucking serious and talks or like the kid that, and looks the like... Or the kid that, like, he suddenly gets enlightened. This is like, well, I believe video games can be too violent, so that's why the only video game I play is Earth is, like, is, um is harvest moon or whatever you know <laughs> and then well i remember like there was somebody i knew like that a real nice guy who actually you know had this weird fucking moment in time that he came he back changed, he but changed he did back, have that but period. he did have this point where it's like he was not into violence anymore so but then being me at like you know a 15 year old age it was like hey let's fucking like push this kid's buttons to the limit <laughs> So you can't play Mario Brothers because, you know, like jumping on the turtles and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I cannot play Mario Brothers anymore. Yeah, so, um, well, what, you play Harvest Moon. I'm like, yeah, but what about when that wolf comes? You can take that fucking hatchet to him and start attacking him. Well, I choose not to. Well, I, I, I choose not to. It's like, but plants, you got to cut them up, you know. It's, it's, you know, bound to happen. Or you, what, can't go fishing? I remember we were playing 1080 Avalanche on GameCube. And there was a part where, like, you know, when you when you get hit in a game, this is like one of those you like could slap the other guy. No, no. Well, you could do that too, but like when when you're a kid, sometimes you like you tie weird things to like actions that happen that probably don't make any logical sense to like an adult. But as a kid, I don't know where these things kind of happen. But like whenever you're a character and you got dizzy and you're like, whoa, it's just like you're like your character stoned and stuff. And I remember <laughs> saying that in the game, he's like, and the guy was all, is he really stoned? Because if he is, I can't be playing this game. And I just I did that thing where I stopped and I went. No, he isn't. <laughs> this is the first fucking time I've ever been shit. <laughs> fucking wait. <laughs> fucking because you know, because the character fucking only smashed his face into like a tree going down, you know, the hill at a hundred miles per hour on a snowboard. So he was dizzy, and I just made the notion like, oh, your character's stoned. <laughs> I can't play this game. This is this is this is a bad influence. I rub off. Are you fucking kidding? I know this kid. Well, he's not a kid no more. But he's I, I mean, fucking same age as us. But I mean, I met this guy a few times. He was a he was a nice guy. But he did. I mean, I know that he kind of had some of this shit going on at one point, and he changed. So good for him. But hearing that, I mean, granted, we're all we all is all we were all kids. We went through some stupid phase of some kind, and that was just this guy. That's just so fucking funny to me he's like wait 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 just puts the controller down he starts like well it was just like i need to i can't have anything that implies marijuana yeah 
And it was, it was funny because I think that was the day, too, like, me and RJ were playing fucking Code Veronica Resident Evil as he first came over. And we are just, like, blowing zombies apart and everything like that. It's just, like, he was going, ah, ah, ah. And this is, what, this is what makes me laugh. Like, fast forward to, well, technically still in the past by now, but, like, 2008 in the future, past this point. This guy came to visit me and Cisco when we were in San Francisco living. And then we're, like, out walking, you know, going to stores and everything and looking at stuff. And we're in this, like... Indian store, and all of a sudden Robert's like, "Look at the fucking name." Well, that's okay. Robert's a great guy, but he's looking at like this giant, um, not 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 a bong, but this big hookah thing, and he's all like, "Oh, I kind of want to get one of those." And me and Cisco were just looking at each other like, "What? <laughs> is, that, is, is that the same guy?" Like, like I know it's been a handful of years since the last time we saw him, but like, oh, he, now he's doesn't have a problem with his characters being stoned anymore in 1080. <laughs> Just to clarify, just so I don't sound like a, a hypocrite, it was one, more one of those things. I didn't really know him when the, when he was going through that phase, but you guys told me about him, and it just be one of the, or I came over and I just missed them. And so when I finally met the guy, I was kind of like, oh, this fucker. I've heard so much about this guy, and then like then I meet him, like, oh, he's actually a really cool guy. It's not like he was going through some weird shit. Yeah, he just but... had weird phases. I mean, he's he, yeah, great guy, totally fun. No, I haven't seen him in a long time, but like. Now, he's a good example. He's just like an example of a good guy who just kind of had the rooster phase, where the rooster is in constant. He, the, I mean, maybe the rooster changed. I hope the rooster know. got his fucking head cut off and he ran around. And went, <laughs> he just ran around. <laughs> and then finally just fell over and died. And went, as he was falling, as, as he was <laughs> running away, like his head saying, This is unrealistic. His head's on the ground. Yeah, yeah I just fucked that rooster. But um, that, that's probably a good place to wrap it all up at, or else I don't even know how long we've gone because we split in half. But. Hell, make sure to check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, and more. And then if you want to help support the podcast a little bit, click on one of our Amazon links that you can find either on the website itself or under the description of the podcast. We'll put some links to God knows fucking what on this episode, but we'll put some fun stuff in there. Click through there. Go to Amazon. won't cost you anything extra. You can technically buy anything you want off Amazon. Just if you use our link, it's like, it's like throwing a little something something to us. If not, you can also, we got a Patreon account that if you want to just throw a couple bucks out, you know, a month or so, all that stuff kind of helps. You know, podcasts aren't, they're free to listen to, but they aren't the cheapest thing to make. You know, it's a timely thing, but you know, just a little bit of support here and there. It does world's wonders. I try to help support other people's podcasts. Just saying. Just saying. Not trying to guilt trip nobody. I'm just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> just thought I'd throw that out there. But, um, Yeah. Till then, I think um, next week what we're going to do, I guess now we can actually fucking like announce something like we're going to do next week, but we're going to do our Tarantino movie or Tarantino movies inspired that are not made by Tarantino. That's not going to be the title because that's fucking dumb, but that's kind of what it is. <laughs> we're going to do three films that are pretty much almost like Tarantino ripoffs, but that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. Classic fucking 90s films such as 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Way of the Gun. Way of the Gun. And Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. All three movies, very Tarantino-inspired. But as we said, that that's that's just a good thing. So tune in for that as we talk to those fun movies. So you, you can either watch them, and then at least you'll know what the hell's going on when we talk about them. Or if you've already seen them, we'll come on by and have a listen, and we'll just have a, a gay old time, fucking Flintstone style. <laughs> I'm going to stick my head out of the roof of the car. Someone's going to give me a giant rib or yeah, something just like that. Yeah, just like a tipper over. And we'll be like the Suburban so it can't tip over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> suburban tips the ribs over instead of the other way around. <laughs> but yeah. Till then. They never had the thing. Every, like every week, you know, like Wilma and Fred, like almost like every fucking week, Fred, this happens. And then you have the worst week, gas for the next three fucking days. <laughs> every week, this thing fucking flips over and you always insist on getting the goddamn giant ribs god can we just one week just get some fucking popcorn like oh god damn it wilma quit being a fucking bitch they have this big awkward like like disp- spousal dis- abuse uh, dis- yeah, dispute right in front of like, like arnie <laughs> and betty are in the back like, oh geez betty you think we should get out of here it's like oh no no I- no bond stay 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 no bond is stupid it's okay this is good for you to see this is like free fucking marriage counseling this stupid bitch would just learn a place. I'm like, what'd you say to me? You, know, you heard what I fucking really said, awkward. woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Fred, I Marty, think let's, I, 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 Marty, let's leave. No, but no, 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 Betty, just stay. It's fine. 
You learn what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Old Man Oink Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Helms. I'm Rand Dunnigan. We'll see you some other day. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. If you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast. You see the Ghostbusters trailer? Yeah. Actually, I- oh fuck, that thing was bad. Oh, it looks so. It looks like pretty dumb, Alex. Yeah, the, the fucking Ghostbusters trailer. It's one of those things. Like, okay, I am totally fine with an all woman Ghostbusters team. I'm totally fine with that. But the thing about it is, it doesn't look like they said, "Hey, let's make a Ghostbusters movie." It just happens to be have girls in it. It just looked like it went. Ghostbusters, but with girls. It's like a fucking remake. I thought it was gonna be a well, reboot. This is what- I, mean, I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like a not a re- well, sort of like kind of a reboot, kind of more of like a sequel. It's just carrying on with a new team. But no, it's just a fucking well, remake. This is the only. Yeah, because th- this would make it a good movie if it was technically Ghostbusters three. Like they don't have to call it Ghostbusters three, but let's just say that they were actually all the daughters of all the characters in the original one. I think that would be kind of cool. You know. I don't even think they got to be daughters. I think it'd be something well, like well, Ghostbusters. Maybe, maybe one or two of them were daughters. The other ones were sort of yeah. related. They're kind of, they had a connection. That's all I'm trying to say is they have a, a connection to the old ones. But I don't know. I, I looked at that trailer and it's just like, I like what's her name. Um, but Kristen yeah, Wiig. Kristen Wiig. I like her. I like her. And Melissa McCarthy. She's a fantastic actress on um, Mike and Molly. Everything else, though, she's just like, look how fat I am. I'm fat. Oh, I'm supposed to be funny. And it's just like, that's not that funny. Like, I I feel bad because she got the Kevin James treatment. Because Kevin James on King of Queens is an amazing fucking actor. He's really fucking good. But then you get to the point where you put him in movies and then they just treat him like, look at him. He's a big fat guy. Laugh at him. Laugh at him because he's fat. And it's just not that funny. You know, it's just like, and I feel bad because I know how good of an actor he is, but he's not getting the credit he deserves. And that's the same thing with Melissa McCarthy. She gets that same thing. And this Ghostbusters movie is technically directed by, I think, the person that did, like, Bridesmaids and The uh, the Heat and all those kind of dumb Melissa McCarthy movies anyways. Which I never saw any of those movies. I hear they're all good. Uh, I but heard, I seen well, them. Bridesmaids, Bridesmaids is okay. It had a couple moments in it, but it wasn't really that great. Uh, the Heat, I've heard that that one was pretty bad. Most people I know saw it. They said it was just kind of dumb comedy like it was oh, really yeah, it was I very slapsticky yeah. retarded yeah i mean i have heard some people say that they actually enjoyed it but most good sources said it wasn't very good um the the what was i gonna say the thing about this movie is i think really what they could this this, only, this isn't don't think it as me being like well if i made the movie but i think what would have been the smart thing to do is like continue the story but do it something kind of like ghostbusters is now a franchise it's just not one little firehouse they've kind of become this franchise and it doesn't even have to take place in new york it take place somewhere else yeah like here's the and Boston this is just, version of it or the seattle version of it and here's like this new branch just kind of opening up and they're trying to like get this dynamic down or the bad guy is maybe a rogue ghostbuster or something like that that's something you don't know you just try and I, i'm gonna say try something different the thing is this is literally, it looks, I mean, who knows? Maybe, I mean, I hope the movie's good. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's a good movie. But looking at it, it it's not doing any favors. Well, you know what it looks like? It looks like Pixels. It looks like yeah. a female version of Pixels. Like, I didn't think about that. That's a good Like, point. when I'm watching it, I felt like it was, like, the same thing when I watched that trailer. And... Where it has all the recipes for something I should like, but just something yeah, about but, it doesn't look good. Yeah, it's like, funny. Because, like, that Ghostbusters one, like, I know... I can't. I would definitely probably not see it in theaters. I don't want to sound like snarky or anything like that, but like, it's just. I don't know. It's just. I. I have no attachment. Like, I love the original Ghostbusters. I like the second one, but I just have no attachment to this new one. Like, it's not like one of those. There's some movies like where it's like I'll be there anyways. You know what I mean? Like, here's one. I. I, I rewatched it again because I got the director's cut of it. I didn't even know there was one, but like Total Recall, like the Colin Farrell version. Like uh-huh. that was one of those movies. that's like. 
some people would go, oh, it doesn't have Arnold in it, doesn't have this in it, I'm not going to go see it. But I'm like, you know what? I like Total Recall enough. I like Arnold. It was different I enough. Like, I like Colin Farrell. I like Kate Beckinsale. I like, it's had, um, um, uh, Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston in it. Yeah, it had, had a bunch of good guys in it. And it had Ethan Hawke in the fucking director's cut. Um, so, you know, and I rewatch I'm like, it's a pretty good movie. What I like about it, it's like, don't run, the Arnold Schwarzenegger one, one of my favorite movies is that and Jurassic Park, my two favorite movies of all time. But that tone or that that Colin Farrell one, it's still pretty good, and it's kind of to me what it feels like. It's like Blade Runner Total Recall. That's almost like the best way to describe it. And it's, it's, like it's one a fun movies. one, and that that was a reason for me to go see it like that. It's like or the RoboCop one. Like I like RoboCop enough, I'll go see that new RoboCop, and I enjoyed that one. Strange enough, this Ghostbusters one does not. It just there's just nothing in there pulling me. Like it's like the closest things me are like, oh, Kristen Wiig's a good actress. Well, whether you disliked or liked uh, RoboCop or the um, Total Recall reboot or remake, whatever, they at least looked different enough. This one doesn't look like it literally looks like it's pulling scenes or combining scenes from the first one and then just making just like changing like the the sex around that, of the gender of the characters where I mean, like I said, I would be totally fine with an all female cast. That's I'm fine with that. It's just because that's the thing a lot of people are saying. If you don't like that, then it's like, oh, you just don't like because it's not the original guys. Like, no, I'm fine with new people. I yeah. just my thing is just if you're going to like re- give, give me another reason to see it rather than just change it, you know, just make it in like because like the other one's a classic. Got to make something different about it. So make it don't make it take place in New York. Make it take place somewhere else. Don't rely on the same jokes, you know, so or the same type, you know, same because even like the like the one part in the thing I kind of even just kind of slightly chuckled at and wasn't even all that great was the part of like, let's go, let's go. Oh, you, you got I'll get next time. OK, that was like the one part. It's like, eh. yeah, yeah, it was like nah, nah. that was the one part. I kind of got that Peter Griffin. Nah, kinda but like it, that. It's, Beyond it's that, I just feel like that movie is it's. It's obviously it's made, by the numbers. Yeah, it's almost it feels like a machine is making it and like it. The ghosts don't even look that cool or interesting. No, it's, yeah, and it's weird. It's just it's something that like, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully, maybe it just had a bad trailer and the movie's actually good. You know, I, I want to. That's what like, I'm hoping. Well, I like the hope for the best, but I I feel like I don't feel like a negative Nancy, but that feels like a long shot. I just I look and I go, uh, I don't know. It it just it looks like it's literally just looks like pixels with women. Like, don't be wrong. I want to be wrong. I want to be. I hope the movie is good, but we'll find out. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, we'll I mean, I'll, that's one of those few cases where <clears throat> I think I'm going to wait on the reviews, you know, and I don't always take reviewers and all that seriously, but I think that is one where I'm going to wait a little while and just see what other people say, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll wait till like an opinion I trust goes and sees the movie. And if they do see it, and probably that won't even happen until like it comes out on video or TV or something like that. But and even Kevin Smith, who kind of like loves everything, kind of said, yeah, that wasn't a very good trailer. you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just like... I, yeah, it's just I don't know because I think it's just going for the dumb comedy that is kind of like what all those sadly enough some of those actors are always in. Is I, I don't know comedy is a weird one. I think it's just kind of yeah, I guess it'll probably be a fine movie if you like kind of slapsticky over the top. Because the thing about the original Ghostbusters is it's almost like it's a comedy, but it's almost first and foremost kind of like a serious movie. The comedy, the fierce thing about Ghostbusters, I mean, it is funny. And there is some great moments, great, great moments of comedy in it. I like more the concept, though, than I find it funny. It's one of those cases where, yeah, it's a comedy, but I think just like some of the the ideas of the story and just the concept of a bunch of guys like ragtag team just drunk, trying to go out and hunt ghosts and just that weird dynamic. I think that almost is better than the comedy in the movie. Yeah, where this one, well, it's almost like because you can almost say that first Ghostbusters it's almost not – I wouldn't even say it's like – maybe I guess you could. I mean you could say it's a comedy, but it almost feels like it's first and foremost like, you know, just a, almost like an action horror movie you could almost say. Mm-hmm. But then it's just got comedy intertwined into it where this one looks like it's the other way around where it's first and foremost a comedy and not really a whole lot of – I mean obviously action, you have action, horror. but like not really – it doesn't have that horror element that sort of the first ones kind of did. I mean I'm not saying it's like scary, scary, but it still had a little bit of like – you know, like especially in the beginning when you didn't really know what these ghosts were. Well, really, when you think about it, like the uh, you know everything in the movie was okay. Egon, he was the blunt scientific guy who didn't really have much of a personality, but other than he just like he's just very focused. 
and then Dan Aykroyd, he was the heart and soul and he was really smart at what he did, but he was just kind of like, he was kind of naive when it came to personal shit. Well, Bill, Bill Murray, yeah, he was a smart guy, but he's just very blunt he's and very this. dry and just yeah. kind of, he bounced off everybody. And that was kind of the dynamic that worked so well about then, that movie. And then there's the black guy who was there. Who's, who's basically, who has all the heart. He has yeah. all the heart. And, um... And I think that that's kind of like he's almost the everyman of the whole group. So I think, you know, that dynamic is I think really the most of the comedy in it is actually not to give all the credit to him is Bill Murray just being blunt and just bouncing off everybody else. That's where most of the comedy comes from. Like some of the shit kind of like there is no Tina on the Zool. And what a lovely singing voice you got, you know, so just small things yeah. like that. It's almost like commenting on things. Mm-hmm. Where I feel or just like the part like no one with the one person who would never hurt me stiff hush, m- marshmallow man is this okay ray has gone bye-bye you know <laughs> you know how they're about to face off against like something from hell and he's like okay that's this is happening all right you know yeah exactly so i i just don't know if it's that's one of the few times where it's just like you know i think i think it's just one of the ones like I know for the longest time they want to make a Ghostbusters 3, and then it just sounds like, well, that's not going to happen. Well, we are still going to make one come hell or high water. We will find a way to make it. And I think just by almost like, it's like those ones like, it's that, here's another example that might be kind of similar. It's like when they said they were going to make that Lethal Weapon TV show, but it wasn't going to have Mel Gibson or Danny Glover in it. It's just like, why? Yeah, exactly. It's like, I understand if you said, hey, let's make a Lethal Weapon 5. Is that still happening or is that canceled? I, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that since that originally came, that idea came out. But it's like, if you want to make like kind of like an Expendables-like movie where it's like, okay, here's Danny Glover and Mel Gibson and they're old and they're still going at it, like, that would be awesome. You know what I mean? And how they have to deal with, maybe, maybe they're retired right now, but then shit starts to happen and like, they're not really cops anymore, but they get drugged into this situation. That mm-hmm. would be cool. But other than that, though, like, that's all it needs to be. And I feel like that's kind of how Ghostbusters is. They want to make Ghostbusters 3 for the longest time. But since for some reason, Bill Murray and all the other guys just decided no, which is kind of weird. Because well, it would, I think he's it tired done, of like, it. It would have been like most movies it could have done, like, fucking amazing. But I think it's one of those things like, no, nah, you know, we did it. It was fun while it lasted. And then Bill Murray just got no, uninterested with it. And then, like, because I think Dan Aykroyd was the one that really wanted to do it. Then Bill Murray was like, I don't know. I don't know. Then by the time he, Dan Aykroyd got on... By the time Bill Murray got on, Dan Aykroyd, they, they, they didn't agree with his script or whatever. And then they're just like, fuck it, not doing it. And then now they're just making their own version. And now this version looks fucking stupid. Hopefully it's good, but I don't know. We'll, we'll find yeah, out, I guess. It's, 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 yeah. 